Whenever you're ready. I mean, we're good to go. All right. What's going on, guys and girls? Welcome to our first February podcast. It is Winterly Wicked, and we are here with what I think is going to be our core crew. We've got the Triforce established here, and we oh, kind of cover I like the that. whole slew of uh, North America, or at least most of it. So holding the Triforce of Texas, Gabe Volatile Gabe. Just Gabe. Hi. Just Gabe. <laughs> Just Gabe. <laughs> it's like if I was Zach, go Zach. Yeah, go Zach. <laughs> Max Blitzmax. Blitz max works. That's okay. Blitz max, blitz ma max. max. Maximum blitz is what it is. Maximum, maximum prime. That is Max hoisting the Triforce of Canada. <laughs> Indeed. And it's oh, built Canada. out of Legos, right? Um, I wish I had some Legos. I have, I have this Lego notebook that I use for ideas. <laughs> Bam! Look at that. Represent. See, I, I knew, I knew something Lego would definitely appear something on your screen. Something Lego would appear. Yeah. And on your screen, you guys see our faces. That's been much requested for a long time, so we are trying it out. Let us know what you think in the comments. Make sure to give us your feedback on this show, as we like every week. We take your questions uh, towards the end. Today, we've got a lot of good stuff to talk about, not only some new games, um, including an updated look at Dying Light, but also news bits, um, including the potential for a new PS4 and Xbox One sort of re-release slash update um, later this year. I think we'll start off, though, with what is on everyone's mind, and that everyone's. is the, le the left shark. Not the puppy bowl. The left shark. Okay. So, so what do you guys think of the left shark? What a phenomena! No, what a phenomena! It, it's so crazy that something. How, how long till we get? Sorry, a mobile game. How long? So I think it's already on. It's on the. It's on the app store now. I, I hope so. No, that's so insane. But whatever. I mean, I think it's interesting that in a game that had like crazy interceptions, haymakers, and a bunch of nonsense Madden predicting the score perfectly correct including the third quarter score including the final touchdown yeah the that, that was that's eerie huh that's so crazy Katy Perry's Wii strap and the left shark yeah, yeah. of course and Missy because Elliott that's, but that's why people watch right I mean like let's be honest people who don't care about the game watch the game so to speak mm -hmm. right because you watch for the commercials and you watch for the crazy halftime show right yeah I mean, Super Bowl all in all, Gabe, what, what are we thinking? What do you rate that one? I I mean, the game was good. I just hate that it was the most viewed, like, Super Bowl ever. Like, the NFL doesn't deserve the success. Like, come on, they've had, a, they've had a bad year on all counts. Like, plus the Packers weren't in the Super Bowl, so I don't care. I, I like the Patriots. Uh, I know it's a contradiction to like both. Wait, but... shouldn't you be cheering for, like, yeah. Cowboys or something? Oh, hell no. They can rot in, wow. in all seven rings wow. of hell. I don't wow. like. I hate That's the Cowboys. That's pretty dark. This yeah. is where I hoist the Triforce of Detroit and say that I was quite dismayed to see all the jokes about the only time a lion will. Uh, make oh, that goals. was amazing, huh? And Katy Perry's lion thing she was riding. Yeah. <laughs> it, it did look like a lion, right? Because that I, is pretty I, smart, like, though. I'm assuming guys. it was supposed to be a tiger because of the song, right? Mm -hmm. But it I looked... thought at first I thought it was a horse. I'm like, some of their some of their visual stuff like was cool, but it was like. All the floor tech was messing with the, the cameras. And and that's why she started flying. <laughs> and she was like, get me off the fight. ground. Yeah, yeah, she showed her real superpowers. And, 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 I th and I think the strap was because she was about to fly. And she didn't want the, like, the mic to fall. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I, I don't think she's a big fan of the Wii. No. Uh, well, what I think is funny is someone retweeted a tweet from her a couple of years ago where she was like, guess who's not watching the Super Bowl? Me. And it was from like the two, during the 2012 or 2013 Super Bowl. No. It, it's huge exposure for her. How many people oh, yeah. watched that game? Yeah. Uh, uh, 114 million. There you go. Imagine. Imagine. God, your... that is so insane. And at the end of the day, she is the focal point, like her performance, right? Well, so... I mean, and Messi Elliott, I mean, she, she's been out of the conversation of music for a long time. But she had like three songs in the top 15 iTunes singles because of that performance. There you go. Like, all I like the... Go ahead. Like Len, Len Kravitz just appeared with his guitar for like 30 seconds and yeah. was just like quietly ushered off the stage. Like they're like headlining Katy Perry with special guest Lenny Kravitz and then Missy Elliott ended up having like five times as much stage time as he did. Yeah. I like Missy Elliott. Yeah. She's cool. I don't know. You know me, my conspiracy self, that last interception there, the play call, I'm thinking. How can how, how can they plan that Tom interception Brady's though? Legacy. I mean, you call in and say, Russell, throw it to, throw it to New England. Oh, oh, the intercept. I mean, but I'm saying, like, the catch right before where it got, like, fumbled a few times. Like, you it's, can't. You, have, you ever seen Flubber? They put magnets in the ball. Oh, wow. <laughs> so is Ladies there magnets? Oh, my to, God. Uh, <laughs> NFL conspiracy theorists. Uh, well, -do 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 -do. Well, we'll move on from that. Um, and uh, you guys have a good week? Indeed.
busy, ridiculously busy. Recommendation to you guys, if you have like 7,000 word essays to do, don't do them the night before. What was Not the essay on? Day. Do them the morning before. Um, it's it was basically uh, about the uh, like what is a proper way of uh, conducting an interview uh, from the company's perspective and kind of like tips and tricks that companies 7, could. Thousand words. Yeah. Could you fill that much space? Yeah, uh, just put, just put a description with all the text. I did. I, I did, however, just basically copy paste this one sentence over and over again just to get my point across. No, I'm joking. Make sure <laughs> be professional, be cordial. Yeah. Be professional, yeah, yeah, be cordial. Yeah. <laughs> just make sure YouTube doesn't see that uh, essay, or they might give you a community strike. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> do, do you not know about that? No. Yeah. Um, I mean, Zach got two. I got one. A lot of people got a whole bunch of community strikes for um, stuff like that. Meta tags. Yeah, in the description. Oh, from... yeah. No, but I, I, I've, I've never, I never did that. And then the only videos I ever did that for, I deleted them a year and a half ago. So. No, well, I was saying, like, you did it on your essay. So just... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it on my essay, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying... Post this essay into his description box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just for everybody to read. 7,000 words. Yeah. <laughs> Gabe, I saw that you were having a a bonfire. Did Harley run away again? No, no Harley. I, I I found out something about her. She likes uh, oh. she likes marshmallows. I thought you were say she likes fire. Is she... that a good thing? Should dogs eat marshmallows? Well, probably not. Well, we were making s'mores. I've never had a s'more, so we were making s'mores, and one of them fell on the ground, and Harley just hope... goes. And wait, just... did you not? I hope you didn't give her any chocolate. No, you no, know, no. Dogs are not allowed. No, they're allergic uh, to chocolate. No chocolate, just marshmallows. She enjoyed okay. it. My dog has been to the uh, emergency vet thrice for, for chocolate overdose. It's like one of those things where once they get it once, they become incredibly, like they can addicted. sniff it out anywhere and addicted and anytime they see it. So like I wasn't home and I had a grocery bag with a organic bar of chocolate, like wrapped up seal in it on top of some boxes in my office. I came home. She climbed up, knocked the bag down, ripped open, shredded the entire. This is a miniature poodle, eleven pounds. Shredded the entire thing and ate the chocolate bar and had to be rushed to the. Uh, what a ninja! Bed. What oh, a ninja! God. It's like, and it's like a four hundred, five hundred dollar uh, vet visit because it's yeah, at yeah, night yeah. and like yeah. they have to put stuff in her stomach and keep her and blah. I like didn't that. even know, but pets can have insurance. That's the thing. I had no idea. Oh really? Yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's real, dude. Yeah, well, I there's. Did not you, know that. You do know that they did a study that showed that they spend more money, like people on average spend more money on their pets than on kids, which was kind of weird. I was like, that's a little bit scary. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And in like what way? Like, oh, we bought. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like the kids yeah. just in the corner crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not sure how they calculate that, but I, I, I know, for example, I remember that there was, I don't remember what it was the statistic. I think it was like. Something like one point two billion dollars gets spent during Halloween on pet costumes, just pet costumes. That's insane. Wow. It, it, it's something like I don't remember the specific numbers. I I probably just made that up, but it was like insane. Around there. Yeah, yeah, it was. How many was how like many Halloweeners crazy. do you think are a Katy Perry shark this year? Oh, this year everybody. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna dress as Katy Perry. Uh, Zach can be left shark. Uh, Max can be right shark. There you go. Hey, like, hit myself in the face. Yeah. There we go. Like I'm or, or, or Max, you can be Lenny Kravitz, so you can only be <laughs> be with it for like 30 seconds that you can leave. Okay, cool. All right. All right. <laughs> My gracious. performance is pretty quick, and I'm done. Zooming from football to games, um, we're going to talk about sort of that updated 4K PS4, Xbox One in a little bit, but a couple quick hits that came out this week just in terms of news, um, and you guys can sort of pick where we start. I'm looking over here. My favorite, I guess I'll pick. Um, is uh... <laughs> <laughs> Nice democracy here, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. This is, this is how the podcast goes. Yeah, exactly. hey, you guys could vote. Not nah. <laughs> behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. I, I send out an outline every week, and it's a it's an, a supposed to be an editable document, but really I just lock it. So <laughs> they, they and it really was saying. locked this week. I tried editing. I'm like, hey Zach, I can't edit it. And he's like, huh? Outline. It's like, what have you been playing? I just dictate what everybody gets to talk about. Yeah. Exactly. Basically. But I want to mention um, Bloodborne has been sort of like unveiled in a big way, um, and that is, I would say the biggest game in the first quarter of the year now that witcher has been bumped i, I don't know I, I guess the order but to me bloodborne has a little more like class to it i don't know i like don't people... know I, I think that I, yeah i don't know it's gonna be very interesting to see if it will be because i'm shocked by how well dying light has done yeah i wouldn't be surprised if that game outsells it because like you have to think general public like not sure. not everybody knows about bloodborne or is interested in that kind of game right, whereas sure. dying light is zombies and that's yeah. really hot you're right you're frozen now. by the way who you 
Me? Yeah, just With you. Your hands up. Yeah. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. Oh, now you're a circle. Just no, you. It's, yeah, it's just okay. you. Okay, let me but turn off my video and turn it back. The thing about interesting about Bloodborne is like Dark Souls, Demon Souls, okay, and then you know Dark Souls 2, there's a lot more popularity. It was multi-platform. Now Bloodborne goes exclusive to PlayStation. There's big talks like, oh, this is going to be their blowout, breakout moment. But I really feel that I, I don't. I, I almost feel like it's going to be a step back in terms of popularity because the title Bloodborne doesn't carry over the Souls name at all. And if I'm General, you know, Joe walking, G General Joe walking into <laughs> <laughs> with his military cap, yeah. walking into Walmart. Hey, you have if that I see new Dark, Souls, Dark Souls game. <laughs> 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 if I see Dark Souls 3, I recognize, hey, this is an established series. Maybe I heard someone talking about it. Bloodborne, especially with the cover, I'm like, uh, sales aside, I mean, it's it's looking really good. They've made some tweaks since the demos. Um, I don't, have either of you guys played it at any trade shows? Yeah, yeah. okay. No. Nah. And I thought that um, I was a little surprised. I'm, I'm guessing it got polished since then. Uh, but there was a little bit of frame dropping, like mm -hmm. noticeable frame drops in that game. Yeah. And it was like weird. I was like, what? This is so strange. Um, and then it also felt like at times it would have that this kind of like a stuttering effect. Like when too much stuff was happening at once, it would like stutter a bit. Uh -huh. So I'm hoping that that was just a case of like early demo or something like that. The know? frame rate definitely looks better. There's some aliasing issues for sure that, again, it, it could, you know, receive a patch um, mm -hmm. or like a final graphics pass. IGN yeah. showed the coverage, so maybe we don't know how old that is. But they did tweak the lighting on that opening area. Um, and the demo area that everyone's sort of seen in videos and maybe have even played it, that is the opening area. And what I found most interesting is um, when I played the demo, I was talking to someone from Namco um, who did Dark Souls and, and, and that. And they said that From Software always tweaks their demos um, to be easier and then ramps the difficulty up in the final game. Um, and that's clearly evident because you have way less health starting the game off fighting that first boss than you did in the demo version. And even that demo version, very few people were beating that. I think they had statistics like 10 out of 5,000 players beat the demo um, on the show floor um, when it was shown off at PAX and similar numbers at Tokyo Game Show. So like, even if it does get mainstream hype, I, I worry a little bit like you're running into that boss in the first 20 minutes. Like they got there by like minute 16. And so it's like, if I'm a Madden gamer, a Call of Duty gamer, am I going to be instantly turned off that I'm dying three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times in the first half hour? Yeah, I mean, but that's been the the issue with these past games. I don't think that it's the person that's buying Madden every year that's going to go buy this game. And so I, it's I, not going to be what they some people are hoping, like, oh, this is the breakout moment for this kind of game. I no, don't think so. No, I think I, I think that this is going to be another very niche title. Like, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that it doesn't sell well, uh, but it's going to sell to like. A core audience and I think that honestly the order 1886 has a better chance of kind of appealing yeah. more broader than Bloodborne because Bloodborne has that you know very stylized feel uh, and sure. order does too but not to the same extent it's a little bit broader and could capture more people's attentions like the traditional shooter kind of fan sure so, the, the order is much more cinematic I think it's an easier sell um, and that game actually I've been increasingly hyped for like the new trailer some of the new gameplay looks much more interesting granted it could be just the way that they're sort of framing it but i'm excited to see what that turns out to be in a couple yeah. weeks here and i love the fact that for order 1886 they did a really good uh, job in the collector's edition it's reasonably priced at like 90 dollars. it comes with a statue still some good stuff and uh it's if you haven't ordered it you're probably late because amazon has been canceling go, people's pre-orders go order quickly. the order kill your, your lovely segue into Whoa. the Mortal Kombat Collector's Editions. But I just want to point out my few quick hits on Bloodborne that I really love about it. One, I think the co-op um, randomized dungeons are brilliant. Like, I'm surprised that with that that much fidelity in that game graphically that they're able to do sort of those procedurally generated dungeons. I think that's really cool with varied bosses and enemies. I don't know how many, like what the set they're pulling from is. Is it five bosses, 50 bosses? But that sounds like a really cool idea. And the fact that you can save those dungeons and send them to your friends um, mm -hmm. like hey see if you can beat this one faster than me it's also co-op like that could be a way to extend that game quite a bit even though people already do you know replay um, the combat with those um, like sort of dual form weapons um, like it'll be a saw and then it'll be a blunt weapon or a sword and a hammer that changes the combat so much um, and it seems like it just really 
speeds up the pace of the game, which is interesting because Dark Souls was a lot about circle strafing and you know kind of keeping your distance and biding your 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 time. But here it's a lot more about being on the attack, and I think that's going to be enough of a tweak. Initially, I didn't think so, but enough of a tweak to get people like, oh, this is a refreshed version, not just you know Dark Souls 2.5. Um, and I really like some of the things they're doing with the cities are much larger. Um, IGN made mention that it felt almost Metroidvania in a sense because you'd find different areas and, and sort of wander off that way and then stumble upon a shortcut that would connect the areas, which is something that Dark Souls 1 did, did really well. Um, and it just has like a really good vibe. And I, I don't know, I'm infinitely excited for that. Yeah, I'm very, very excited for that game for sure. I think that it looks really, really cool. And uh, again, from what I played, it's like it has all the tools to be good it's just like i said the only things i was concerned about is the technical execution you know mm -hmm. and, and then also like what you're mentioning i actually didn't know about the uh, randomly generated bosses mm -hmm. so that sounds awesome because that sounds like something where like you know it doesn't as long as there's enough variance there it won't get boring and that gives a lot of replayability to the game for sure and it sort of expands upon dark souls has always had interesting like co-op kind of competitive experiences with invading or working together on bosses but this kind of it almost feels like a separate mode where you can go into this they're called the chalice dungeons and then you go in and it's a randomized layout randomized enemies I mean I just like the idea also that like I could play a really cool one and then send sort of that seed to you and then you could you know go through and experience what I experienced that's kind of a cool idea yeah for sure Moving to your segue, which was collector's editions, um, Mortal Kombat, Gabe, you were kind of on the, the, the tip on this one. Five different versions? Yeah. yeah. Um, I will sit here and read them all off for you. First uh, of all, though, before we get to the actual uh, read-off point, uh, um, in general speaking, are we excited for the game? Because there was actually three or four comments on yeah. the last podcast Whoa. saying, hey, can you guys talk about Mortal Kombat? Well, we'll Kombat. talk about what we think about the game after okay. I say these, okay. these okay. collector's okay. editions. Sure. All right. All right. So go. I'm going to go for it. begin. Yeah, combat with a K. So let's clear that up. All right. So and the more. with a K. Oh, yeah. That's what I meant. My bad. Yeah. Yeah, All right. So the most expensive one is $180, the collector's edition. It comes with a scorpion statue, exclusive peel pack and steel card, uh, Blood Ties comic book volume one, an in-game scorpion skin, uh, the combat pack. I don't know what that is. And uh, that's available for PS4 and Xbox One for $180. Mm-hmm. Man, I don't think that's worth it. All right, so All right, so that's one. Yes, the one below that is the collector's edition by Coerce or Coerce. They're being <laughs> they're being coerced to do this. That's what it says. Okay. Um, it okay. has an exclusive scorpion uh, figurine and a certificate of authenticity. Authenticity couldn't even say that. Designed by Coerce, Coerce has been recognized in collector and designer figurine communities for their. I've never heard of them. I, are, they, are these different <laughs> figures then? Yeah, yeah. yeah, they yeah are. This is a different. So they're they're going to be aesthetically very different. This yeah. one is. Okay, yeah, uh, well, ju just the scorpion that. figure is different, but yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but you also get the gold scorpion skin, which is inspired by the Coerce figure. So I guess that one is different. And uh, okay. the combat pack again, which uh, here it says includes. So this is the third one already, right? No, no, this is the same. This is still the second. Oh, okay. So why is this one that has like the certificate of authenticity and all this like cheaper? Why is that the cheaper one? I don't know, but it's, I think the statue. Hyping? I think the statue. But why aren't they hyping the more expensive statue? Uh, no, I think this is a less expensive statue. Like it's not as high quality, I believe. But so oh, yeah, and yeah. and the other one has a steel pack. I don't believe this one has that. This one does have the four add-on right. playable characters from classic combat to iconic guest characters and. Uh, mm -hmm. That's available on all platforms as well. That's 150. 50. All right. All right. Below that, this is a weird price though. $95. The limited edition, which in includes a scorpion skin, uh, okay. design inspired by Cold War, whatever that means, uh, and it's a color uh, collaboration between NetherRealm Studios and a fan artist from MKK Collect or MK Collective. Mm -hmm. Which is a crowdsourced destination where Mortal Kombat enthusiasts can upload, submit, and share their MK related art. Okay. That's cool. And this also has a combat pack, and that's it. All right. All right. Below that for $90, which is $5 less. And this is digital only. This is a combat pack, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so. For that, you're paying thirty dollars for a combat uh, pass. I think it's a season pass. I think that's what they call it. Okay, but that's a pretty like usually there aren't season passes twenty five dollars. 
Sure. Um, that's all it says. It's just a combat yeah. pack. And if you pre-order the game, you can also play as Goro, don't forget. Yeah, but that's yeah. separate. I mean, that's so confusing. Yeah. So, that's yeah. It. And if you Mortal pre-order combat. all five, you get a kiss from Ed Boon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he flies over. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't fly. He teleports through a fire portal. So and, yeah, and he goes, and he goes, get over here. Yeah. Like, uh, like Scorpion does. So. The combat pack is four add-on characters. So four characters for $30. So they must be $8 a piece regularly? Or 10 even? I don't know. What, what was the injustice? Well, cause like, well, cause, yeah, but I think they also come with like skins and stuff. It's not just a character. I mean, it's expensive. It's... Like, there's people all over NeoGAF that are saying, like, I'm part of the problem. Like, I'm buying, like... The- yeah, I mean, that, that's my first thought, is, like, as dumb as we think these things are, as, as much as we, you know, sort of poo-poo the Evolve thing in the past weeks, it's like, they're only making these because they think they're going to sell them. They're only making them because they know that a significant, or at least a solid portion of the audience wants this kind of stuff. There's no way they invest in this statue, this $180 edition, unless they're confident they can they can sell some. So as, as dumb as I think it seems to be, and I'll happily pay my 59.99 and go play the game like there's definitely there has to be a market for this yeah, yeah of course i mean I mean, we made fun of the borderlands thing and that thing sold out like that remember the 400 dollar or whatever one yeah how much of it do you think is really like oh i'm a hardcore mortal Kombat fan versus almost the amiibo thing of like there's this extreme limited edition i have to get it and it's not even because they want the product but because it's like you're told it's limited you're told it's expensive that happens a lot with TVs as well, or a lot of consumer products. You'll see like, oh, this one bears the the Sony name, or this one has a more expensive price tag, so it must be cooler, better. I gotta have it instead of really evaluating what you're, yeah. you're getting. And I'm sure some of it is that, but also there are very, very rabid Mortal Kombat fans out there. Um, Ed Boon tweets out pictures all the time of people getting like Mortal Kombat X tattoos all over their body. Like, <laughs> if you're getting a Mortal Kombat tattoo, you're gonna go buy the hundred and eighty ver- uh, dollar version. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. they're out there. So, I mean, to each his own. If if you guys are into that, by all means, go ahead. Yeah, um, I mean, and to be fair though, like what you said, a lot of these do go up in value substantially. You know, like, mm-hmm. um, as, like I remember specifically one off the top of my mind, Uncharted Two. That edition, that uh, collector's edition, sells for like ten thousand dollars now on eBay, which is insane because that came out at I think like a hundred and twenty or ninety even or something like that. So imagine in like five years you make ten thousand dollar return. Yeah. I guess it depends how limited it is. It seems like oh, yeah, even the ones they some say of these are, are going to be very limited. Some yeah, of these, yeah. like like that claptrap thing, is super limited. Sure. Oh, oh, uh, the um, Legend of Zelda uh, limited edition, that's probably going to skyrocket in price, right? I mean, like, right. whenever you make something limited, there is going to be a huge demand for it. Yeah, and, and I can't even sit here and say, like, oh, you're dumb if you, buy, if you buy this, because for the next Zelda game, you have to have, like, a $200 version that, that comes with, like, Epona, or, or, like, I don't know, the Master Sword, mm-hmm. like, you know, in a, in a giant thing. I'll, I'll definitely get it. I love Zelda. And just like that, people, I have a Zelda tattoo. I'm one of those guys that, that's tweeting to Ed Boon, like, hey, look at my sick new Mortal Kombat tattoo. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Indeed. The game itself, though, where where are we ranking yeah. sort of each of our enthusiasm? Have you guys seen the gameplay? Yeah, mm-hmm. I've seen a... Oh, is that... Well, I've is that, seen one character reveal, the last one, and then I've seen the, like, initial gameplay. I, I, I'm sure Max hasn't seen this, but this is more specific to Zach. Zach, did you see Gronk and Marshawn play this? I did not. Oh my god! I had the video queued up and I forgot to Ooh, watch it. It was it was it was amazing. It, it, it's the best. But the fatalities in that game are disgusting. They are. I mean, oh, man. at a certain point, like I understand where it's going for, and like I thought the X-ray stuff in, in nine was really cool. But like, to, to me, it's it's like we we had this story this week about sixteen hours of Witcher three sex scenes being mocapped and. Oh, they're putting it in because it, it, that's how you're going to learn about the character, and it's going to really build his, um, you know, about him and like the knowledge about him and how we're going to understand his relationships. And it starts with the sex scene, not for shock value, but to establish that he likes this girl, and like as if that's the way you you establish that. And to me, it's just a total shock value thing. I mean, duh, it's a shock value thing. Um, but at a certain point, like as we get more and more detailed, like, I was watching the Sub Zero, not Sub Zero. What's the last character they revealed? Reptile. Yeah. And, and I was like. Man, I'm not doing that fatality. Like, I don't. I'm 25, but like, I don't want to look at that. Like, it's just. I mean, it, it just depends how like desensitized you are to all this I, stuff. I like, I see it, and like, obviously, yes, it's shocking, but I can sit there and do the fatalities over and over. Like, there's people out there that love seeing that stuff. Like, 
you know, I don't think it's shocking. Like, oh my god, I've never seen this before. But to me, it's like, I would rather play the fighting game, and sure, have blood, but like to like chop people's faces off or detach their neck slowly or cut them up from like their balls up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's it's definitely uh, one of those things that is um, gross and stuff. But again, for the audience that they're going for, yeah. and in no way like do I want. Anybody who does like Mortal Kombat feel like, oh, you're beneath me, you know, like how dare oh, sure, you enjoy sure, it. Sure. It's sure. like that's not what we're saying. It's just, I guess, for us, and, and I shouldn't say for us, for me personally, it's just not something that I particularly look to. Mm -hmm. uh, like, again, I would be much more excited to see uh, the next Injustice game because yeah. that's what I'm more interested in. But this doesn't mean that like this game is going to be bad. I mean, I'm sure that from a technical standpoint and everything, it looks polished. It looks like it runs smooth. Uh, and I'm sure for Mortal Kombat fans, it's going to be an awesome, yeah. awesome time. I mean, I like Mortal Kombat. I I'm excited to play it. Um, I'm excited to watch uh, watch it at Evo. I'm assuming it's going to be there. So and they are integrating some of the injustice elements, right, Gabe? Like some of the background. Yeah, yeah. Interact interactions. Yeah. Ex yeah, exactly. So, and but they did do that in a previous Mortal Kombat, didn't they? Before Injustice, even. No, the uh, one with the. You're talking about I... Mortal Kombat Nine. Maybe it, it was no. just called Mortal Kombat. So there was another one. I think it was with the guy with the hat on the cover, Luke Kong or whatever his name. I don't know. I'm not a the huge guy with the the guy with the hat. The guy with the hat is Raiden. Um, I, I... No, 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 no. I know Raiden. I thought that's Everybody what you're talking Raiden. about. No, no, no. Oh, Luke Kang. Uh, no, Luke Kang doesn't even have a hat. He does a fire kick thing. Okay. He's the one that yells. I think the game looks cool. My only little slight with the game is that it's multi or cross gen like that uh, graphically it doesn't to me look that much better than nine really at all and I, I saw some people comparing it to killer instinct which launched with the xbox one and showing the backgrounds and sort of the character models and it seems to not even match up with that i don't know the mm -hmm. ps4 version uh, which is um what they were showing on that gronk and marshawn playing it, it looked really good um I haven't seen like the PS3 or Xbox One version. I honestly didn't even didn't even know that it was coming to those until you just said it. Yeah, but, it's cross gen. Yeah, the game looks good to me, and, and I'm excited to play it. And I don't think it needs like great graphics. I mean, Street Fighter V is, for better or worse, kind of borrowing the same, carrying yeah. over the the paintbrush style from four. Um, I think it. I think people just expect, me, myself included, like new consoles, new generation. It's gonna blow you away. Yeah. How crazy yeah. that we live in a society where they can do this. And sell millions of copies. Like people are excited for this game because you can decapitate people. And I just think it's, it's I think it's insane. weird because it's the way that it's sort of um, framed. Like I think about Dead Space, and there was a in Dead Space One, um, they showed these like commercials and things where they would show all of Isaac's decapitations, and one was where an alien crawled inside his suit and then erupted from his neck and it blew his head <laughs> off. Whoa. But to me, that wasn't as offensive because. First of all, Isaac's in a suit. Second of all, the graphics weren't as good. Third of all, it was like an alien being crazy. But seeing two people, like, you're standing there in this black room, and they just... Well, they're I... not all people. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> some, some could be a lizard person, I guess. But, like... Kyle I guess, Lau, by the way. I found why, why does Hatred, there you the go. game where they shoot people in the head, you know, or, or glorify gun violence, why does that make people be like, <gasps> oh, my God. And then we have a game here which has... I guess I guess I'm just curious. What do you guys think? Why is this violence more acceptable than something of, of like hatred's nature? I, I think because this game has a history of violence. Good movie, by the way. But it has a history of, of making violence a little bit more stylized. Hatred is doing it just to, for like shock value. And not that this isn't shock value, but it it, it comes from a more playful place. It seems like yeah. it's like they agreed to it because they're fighting each other. <laughs> I also think that the thing is that Mortal Kombat does, it's so exaggerated. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it's like, you know, those like, um, what was that one horror movie I watched one time? I think it's called Brain Dead or something. Like, it's just insane. Like, it's, uh, I, I never even finished it. I was at a buddy's house and he decided that we should all see it. Uh, and it's just so gory, like, un just ridiculously gory, you know? You mean Evil and, Dead? Uh, maybe, no. I don't know. It, it had like a really scary, like creepy cover of like a girl like pulling her face off or something. It was uh, weird. Right. Yeah. So it, when you want, and you know, the, it has an audience. Like people want to see that like just so ridiculously violent over the top that people enjoy it. Now for me, it's not something I'm like, I seek out. Like, like for me, like Mortal Kombat at this point, like I don't play very many fighting games. 
and I don't particularly care for that style and everything and presentation. So it's like for me, it's a kind of like a double negative in my opinion, but I could totally see how people enjoy it because it's like it's almost like so exaggerated that it's okay. It's almost comical at this point. Yeah, you know? and that's what it is. It, they're more lighthearted even though they're still yeah. tearing heads off. And yeah, and it has that also like, you know, that community element of like, um, like, you know, it's like, you know, like teabagging or something in shooters, you know, there's that element of like where the finisher has or the fatality, I should say, is like, you know, so exaggerated, like, oh, you got wrecked or whatever, you know. Yeah. So I think it's 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 done in a arcade kind of like exaggerated fun manner and not to say, oh, look at how violent we are, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I might be the only person that, that feels this way to me. I just. The way our society is going, like the like, what is the point of that? What is the the purpose of that except to feed like the the, the incessant need for more and, more and more and more and more and more and like at what point do do we we sort of quash that as a society? And I guess the answer is we don't. Yeah, Tra- uh, transcendent polygons got to you, by the way. Like, look at you. You're you're <laughs> giving him what he wants. Let's move on. All right, we can move on. Um, let's let's jump to sort of the main discussion for this week, which is this interesting report that came out from Forbes um, of all places. Um, and it's from, I believe, the CEO uh, or chief product officer, Neil Hunt from Netflix. Netflix. Um, and unfortunately, we're not sponsored by them. Uh, but he basically suggested that there would be a new um, PS4 and Xbox One model this year, a two-year refresh that would include um, 4K, 4K support. And, <laughs> you know, he said... That There's so many issues with that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Netflix declined to provide more detail on the reported Sony promise, but the way that this was sort of given um, was that Sony promised a PS4 hardware revision that would give the console 4K video capabilities. Now, let's be very clear. This would not be for games. This would be a refresh that sort of enhanced the sort of side features of the boxes um, and that, you know, it, w- it would be a way for them to create a slim line and then add a new feature or create, you know, kind of a, a, a jump start again this fall. Um, and then Sony responded by saying support for high resolution 4K output for still images and movie content is in consideration, but no further details. Um, and, you know, obviously they're not going to make comment. You could read into that what you want. They didn't straight up say no. They didn't straight up say yes. But I guess the bigger question to me is like, are we at that point where we're going to start getting those minor adjustments? We've heard about that for a while of like, oh, you know, the way that PCs keep speedily increasing their specs, will consoles need to do the same more often? Uh, how does that sit with consumers? How does that sit with you? Let's let's take this as truth. There is going to be a new one. How do you respond to that? Well, you touched on it, and I think it should be very, very clear. You're not going to play games in 4K. Like, especially not in native 4K resolution. Like, the Xbox One can barely do 1080p sometimes. So, that's not happening. Um, As far as uh, movies, they can stream 4K right now, I believe. Like, that's not up to the console. If Netflix decides they can do it, and the bandwidth is there, unless I'm mistaken. um, Well, if they could, then what's the point of this box? Well, here's the issue. I'll give you the the quick, like, technical breakdown. The Um, HDMI, the the one... HDCP 2.2 is content protection, and that is what Netflix and Amazon require for 4K streaming, and neither the PS4 or Xbox One support HDCP 2.2, and they would have to have a full hardware revision to be able to do that. Okay. So that's that's sort of the uh, the deal. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's one of those things that is very weird in terms of, because um, this would obviously be completely not a, game related thing you know and Mm. we've seen how much success both of these boxes have had since they focus solely on saying this is a gaming box first and then yes it can do netflix and hulu and fill in the blank you know so Mm. i wonder how do you market a new box to people by saying well you can now stream 4k you know if that's its big selling point i I don't know if that's going to be enough to make people bite down uh, especially people that have already purchased one like i don't see anybody upgrading to this um no. who has purchased the original one yeah i think it'd have to be one of two ways either one they box this in with a slimline refresh so hey the ps4 is now 30 percent smaller the xbox one is 40 percent smaller or they just add it in and now it's a extra you know check mark on the back of the box to say supports 4k like that 
they maybe they don't even have to expect any sort of upgrade per se, but in this specific instance, yeah, I don't think that this would warrant anybody to be like, oh, I got to get a new one. It's, it's yeah. such a small, yeah. Feature. Maybe na- maybe Netflix is just like premature. I, I I can see this happening like a few years down the line, but right now, because 4K prices for, you know, decent TVs are still quite expensive. Um, HDMI mm-hmm. 2, which is pretty much required to um, have a 4K run uh, at, at a desirable frame rate, that's still not necessarily here. So a couple years down the line, uh, down the line, when HDMI, you know, version two is a thing, and uh, things of that nature, then sure, you know, you get a slim PS4, a slim Xbox, and you include this with the box. I can see that, but right now, uh, it, like I said, it's just premature. Unless, if to be honest, from a business perspective, if Netflix is sitting back and they've talked to, let's say, Sony, right? Since that's who they said they've talked to, and they say. Uh, and they start adapting more of a cable service provider kind of strategy, you know, where they'll do a thing of like, hey, subscribe to Netflix for 18 months and you get a subsidized PS4 or something like that. You know, I, I could see a program of some sort like in that regard also working out. Or does Sony use it as a way to really usher in 4K? Because something's going to have to step forward and say right now we, we all say and everyone says 4K is too expensive. The TVs are, are too pricey. The content is too rare. Does Sony have a vested interest in pushing it on PS4 to, to bring that market closer and closer to consumers and, and get that kind of into our living rooms faster? Because otherwise, what's it going to be? Just time? Just, yeah. I mean, the other thing that I think is interesting to think about is last generation was exceptionally long at you know seven, eight years. This one is going to be, by the time they're talking about this refresh, this fall, two full years. And the average generation, you know, at four, five, six years, people talk about, again, this one being kind of underpowered from the start. Are, are you okay with a two-year, a three-year refresh of these consoles? Would you rather them do Refresh or well, a new console? I guess I guess that's, that's a big difference, right? Let, let's take the new 3DS as an example. Like, what if they came out with a PS basically 4.5 in, in either this year or next, let's say next year, 2016, and said, we're going to make, again, this is where it gets goofy because I, I don't see them doing this, but games that look better on this. And so not exclusive games. Let's not go all the way to the new 3DS kind of model of like, hey, we're going to have exclusive PS 4.5. But you play on PS 4.5, you get 4K. The games are going to be basically remastered in, in up res, you know, whatever. And um, we're going to have, you know, all games will work, but some games will take more advantage of these more powerful sort of upgraded consoles. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, it depends. The big difference is, first of all, price. Mm-hmm. Right, because a 3DS is what 140 dollars or whatever. No, the new it is. ones, yeah, yeah, 199, I think. Oh, yeah. one. Okay. Yeah, they're two. So, but yeah. still, that's a more reasonable price point than a 400 dollar console. And if you have to upgrade that uh, again, like, I don't think that the console market is ready yet to adapt. Like, okay, every year and a half we get a new iteration of the consoles. Uh, I don't think that we're ready for that yet. I think that people uh, in general kind of buy consoles with the idea that this is a long-term investment, you yeah. know, for four or five and now even longer uh, years than that, right? So uh, I don't think that there's room for that. I think that there is obviously going to be the slim version, maybe the quieter version or whatever, right. but I don't see them doing anything that is uh, in some way like what you said is going to be like, creating like an exclusive or something like that because i just think that that's it's too early and the market i, I don't see people adapt yeah it. yeah the market just wouldn't allow that people- i mean you, you say that but like our consoles is that just a mentality because i can go buy an 800 hundred dollar graphics card and two years later i can buy another 800 hundred dollar graphics card and it'll be significantly better no it won't it, it'll be you- marginally better just by a tad bit it, it won't 800 two years on pc yeah a, a, a 800 hundred dollar graphics card I mean, first of all, the, like, okay, get if you got a Titan when it came out, mm-hmm. okay, and now the, the 980 is out, right? Okay, let's just say any graphics card. Two years, you could buy a Im- significantly improved graphics card. If, if you're on the low end. Okay, so high end, you get the most expensive graphics card. Two mm-hmm. years from now, that's still a pretty great graphics card. The most, hi- the most high end in two years isn't going to be, you know... The leaps and bounds are better, but it will be better. You'll you'll get a, a better performance, but it, it, it's not 
significant. And, yeah, no, no, no. I guess I'm just speaking more from the idea that PCs are upgradable, people spend money on new parts, and consoles are more event-based launches where it's like, oh my god, the new PS4, the new PS5, and to think of a console as a, a parts-based box that would be upgraded. I mean, I'm talking even it still costs the same. So, like, you still have the PS4 at $400 or whatever, but now it's just a you know, PS4 Plus version that has a better pro like yeah, why, but how, why would they not okay, do that? But put let's put us per, uh, into the perspective of General Joe again, right? Uh, With his and, army cap. Yeah, and he just bought he just bought himself a four hundred dollar <laughs> PS4, and now two years or a year later, like let's say if you bought it this holiday season, right? And then at E3 they're like, hey, in September we're making a new PS4. How do you feel now? Isn't that just mentality though? Because Apple refreshes every year. Yeah, yeah, but PCs refresh every year. Yeah, well, that's different. Be and also don't forget, like when you say PC refresh, Apple is the a good example. But with PC, is like what you said. Don't forget that that's a very small audience from the entire user base that will upgrade yearly. Most people, even oh, who buy gaming PCs, will do a a, a good investment up front oh, yeah. totally. and then carry it over they would a have few to, years. I'm not saying they'd have to make the upgrade. I'm just saying the upgrade is out there for, for Mac and PC stuff and people yeah. aren't up in arms like, oh my god, I just bought this i7 processor with this bridge and now this one's out. Like People don't freak out about yeah. that. So if you're a PS4 still play all the games, but they said, hey, you can get a little bit boosted version if you buy it now, to me that just seems like I, I get why it would upset people, but it's just because of the framing of, of what the console space is. It's not really... Like, like they improve But the problem with year. that, like, look, the effects of that, yeah, I know, but the effects of that become, like, again, uh, first of all, with Apple, we've been coached that that's yeah. the normal cycle. Sure, sure. Nintendo's doing the same right now, trying to figure that out with the 3DS, where it's almost every year now we get a new version of a mm -hmm. 3DS or DS. And they're doing that, and they're having good success with it, so I'm sure they'll continue. But I just think that the market is not going to be accepting of a console that has a one or two year cycle and then you have to upgrade to the next one to play certain games because if you if that jump is substantial and let's say playing game x is going to be a way superior experience then you get into a lot of other issues in terms of development cycles right because like then if you're telling companies okay you have a one year well, well, development no, but what cycle if, what if the games carry over they're just they're just up -res. But so, like there's no you're yeah, not but separating then why, the market. But then why would I upgrade? Just for a visual boost? I don't know that you would upgrade. I think I, I guess the real question is we look at the Xbox 360 when it came out. I'm thinking of games like Cameo, um, Call of Duty, uh, Ghost Recon Advanced Warfare was one that blew people away in its first year. Mm -hmm. And look at the games at the end of that life cycle, you know, the the last of us, the I know yeah, it's yeah. Xbox, yeah. but mm -hmm. does this console generation have that? That time? same well, or that same growth potential. Are these consoles? Do they have enough power baked in so that in six years we're going to be like, oh my god, Infamous Second Son looks like trash? Yeah, I think so. I, I think I, I think so because I think that well, first of all, a lot of developers have said that themselves. They said that they're still learning these boxes mm -hmm. and still trying to figure them out. Uh, and the fact that um, look how good Uncharted One looked, right? And then what they did with Uncharted Three. That's on the same console. Even people at Naughty Dog have said that we we just kept optimizing and optimizing and we figured out how to get the best out of that console, right? Mm -hmm. So I just think that it's one of those things that is, first of all, I don't think that there is uh, any more people, like if you've noticed, there's not such a huge emphasis of uh, graphics anymore. I don't think that uh, that's the number one thing that people look at anymore. You know, I, I don't see that uh, being as big of a thing as it used to be where like, you know, where we you had jumps. You must not go on NeoGAF very much. I, I know, I mean like, look, don't get me wrong. I, I get the criticisms about, oh, the Xbox only plays whatever, 920p or whatever, 720p. That's all fair. Um, I think that there's now a lot more criticism about frame rate than there is about uh, graphic fidelity. Uh, but I also think that uh, in general, there is other ways that people can take advantage of consoles uh, and that is like for example focusing on style versus graphics sure. because no matter what if you're going for a realistic look 
a realistic look this year is going to look terrible five years from now. Yeah. But I, because I guess of like, just detail uh, application and stuff like that. Whereas, like, look at stuff like Wind Waker. It still looks good. Why? Because it's stylized. And of it's, course they it, still can. I'm, I'm just saying from a money-making perspective and from st for staying at the forefront of technology, and I'm pulling this from Forbes as well, th their thought was that 4K is going to be everywhere within two years. And if that's the case, you're watching it on TV, you're watching it in movie theaters, you're watching it you know, on your computer, and your game console is the only thing that can't do 4K. Where does that set them? Like, well, the thing, man... Broadcast t television right now, CBS, NBC, Fox, the channels everyone has, they don't even uh, they don't even broadcast in 1080p. Um, a lot, all these channels, none of them do. Um, your your Dish provider, whatever it may be, Directv, uh, Dish, Time Warner, they don't they're not outputting in 1080p. It's not happening. They're broadcasting in 720. It gets upscaled to 1080 to your TV, so you're losing some quality there. There's no way we're ready for 4K. Um, if they're not even putting out 1080p content, like TV, th how, why on earth would they just skip 1080p and jump to 4K? Yeah, I, I just think, yeah, I 100% I agree with you. Like, it's one of those things that by the time it's big enough and people, like what you said, people are like, well, why is my console not doing 4K? We're already going to have 4K in PF, uh, PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox. I mean, I just don't saying think... That it's not adapting quickly enough. There isn't enough early adapters to create a flow, a mass flow to drive the prices down by a huge adaptation. Same thing, look, 4K is of course more visually driven, but 3D TVs, right? Those things st still have not ever reached like mass market appeal, right? I, mean, I think 3D was just a blunder. Yeah, yeah the 3D was a gimmick and it's dead. Like, I, mean, uh, I guess it depends like to me, you're, we're talking about, oh, that's not the only thing these consoles can do is graphical power, but where have games gone? I mean, they talk about all this cloud tech. I haven't really seen a game that takes much advantage of that. Instead, we're getting games that either look prettier or are bloated in terms of the world is bigger, there's more to do. So to me, it seems like... Or from, better stories also. But, but we haven't seen those. So to yes, me, it's like... Last of Us. But I'm talking about this gen. I'm talking about PS4, okay. Xbox One, like... Where does this go? If you're going to sell someone, if you're a Best Buy employee and you want to sell someone an Xbox One and PS4, I think you do point to graphics. Like, isn't that, isn't that what you show off or? Say, well, no. Like, what you're showing off is they're not making games for the other one anymore. Well, okay, <laughs> I mean, that, but but as like the upgrade point, the upgrade point of consoles typically, I mean, even from like PS2 to PS3, was it really that games got so much more? No, 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 no. Yeah, it's, that was still visuals. visual. Yeah, of course. But the fact is now you see a more and more. Um, of the like there's a pullback from like at least in my opinion i mm. think that there's a pullback from the audience to not focus so much on uh oh does uh, whatever connor or what, whoever's the new assassin in assassin's creed does he look realistic yeah. there's a lot more focus on um is the world interesting does the world look alive and like actually yeah. filled in and not empty and i'm walking around an empty huge world um is the uh, visual, um, like actual stylistic choices are cool? Is it accurate to the real world if it's referencing real world stuff? Like that's, I, I think there's more and more focus on how well the game runs, plays, and tells a story than a focus on, oh, how many pixels does this game I just game wonder do? if that's partially because people have been disappointed with what this gen has, has pumped out. I mean, what game really is like blowing your mind in the same way that things have in, in past generations? There, there really hasn't been one. I mean, a lot of this, I guess, boils down to a how fast does 4K, you know, sort of take over or does it not take over? But also, like we mentioned this before we started, and we'll get to Dying Light in a couple minutes. That game scored almost a full 10 points higher on PC because it ran better and it looked better. If we're already at that point. What, what's going to happen in five years when we know that PCs are going to continue to improve yeah. and Xbox One PC and, Master and PS1. Race. So, so doesn't that almost invite slash require some sort of upgrade refresh from Sony and Microsoft? Well, no, because Dying Light scoring lower on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 wasn't necessarily that they couldn't make it run better. It's they ran out of time. Remember, there was a 360 and a PlayStation 3 version of that game that got canceled. So the focus got shifted a little bit. But we see this all the time. Games look better on PC. Far Cry 4. Oh, yeah. Assassin's Creed uh, of course. So but, but they don't play better. Gonna, that's only yes, going to be like this, is, Wait, how do they not play better? Of, 
because oftentimes they have terrible ports. Oh, oh, sure, right? sure, 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 sure. And then that's the let's be honest. Unity was horrific uh, on launch day. At least on consoles, it still played. Yeah. On PC, it was just terrible, from what I understand. Yeah. Again, I didn't play it, but that's what the news were in general. So there was there's a ton of times that PC gets terrible ports and terrible. Uh, ports of console experiences. I think they're getting better at, at, about that, by the way, because I mean, I'll, again, well, because more people are buying PC games now yeah. instead of, uh, you know, pirating them. I mean, yeah. and, and Dying Light is, is a good example. That's a great port. I, I don't know what what they're what they started developing on. Uh, if PC was was the main one, or, or maybe PlayStation Four, but the game ran perfectly for me the whole time on on PC, and I never had a single issue with it. I mean, me, me personally, I love the event nature of console launches. I'd rather it be a big new thing and a big new deal in four, Every five, six year? years. No, no, I'm saying like, I'm oh, saying yeah. I would rather it be spaced out. I think that's more exciting. You get more like, oh, I love my box, but I can't wait for this new one. And you kind of, I don't know. That's how I've grown up. That's what I like. That's my personal that's preference. That's what everybody likes. Yeah. And that's just, why it's going to be difficult to change. I just wonder though, like they have to evaluate. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but what is their next thing? And if it's incremental, do they have enough to... Like, like, okay, so they could go one of two routes. Either PS5 is in five years and it's a disc list system because digital takes over and blah, 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 blah. Or if monetarily it makes more sense to keep the main structure of the PS4, upgrade you know, the graphics, upgrade the processor a bit, and then make a disc list slim version. They talk about always, like, at what point are consoles going to sort of reach their max? And I just wonder how close we are to sort of we're, that tipping point. Yeah, we're very, very close. Not, I mean, PC is the way to go, man. Uh, when somebody asks me, should I buy an Xbox One or PlayStation 4, I tell them, I ask them, do you have a PC? Get a PC first. But at the same time, like, you plug a console and you put the disc in, it's so much It's, it's so much more of a clean experience. It's, it's yeah. totally... I still think there's plenty of space for consoles. I just wonder, what are these companies going to... You know, Microsoft and Sony it seems like aren't going to do the Nintendo thing of like, hey, we've got motion. Microsoft tried this time to make this crazy box that did TV input and did, you know, connect and blah, blah, blah. All those features are falling away. So if we're looking at strictly a power upgrade for the next gen, do we need that upgrade? I mean, at a certain point, it would be cool if they had a box that you could just go buy the parts and upgrade like a PC, but then what is this box anymore? So Well, and plus then you're making that, polished experience of totally plug and yeah. play and you're off the, to the races yeah i mean yeah. That, then it's it's a pc right um i don't know i mean the problem is you see like people keep saying this oh my god consoles are gonna fail but then again they're they selling don't. better yeah, than they're, ever yeah they're doing um, amazing the numbers are better for this cycle than they are for the last cycle do you think though they don't look at nintendo and see them sell 3ds models over and over again and be like huh what if we could get in on some of that well you if you can price it down yeah, yeah. i mean the, the the key would be to but Nintendo's pricing it the same. It. So what if you did identical pricing? Yeah, but pricing? Nintendo is going at two hundred dollars. Yeah, you know what I mean. Whereas but if I, but if I tell, yeah, I know. But if I tell you spend four hundred every year or two hundred every year, that's a very different proposition. Uh, yes, there are people who upgrade an iPhone every year, but most people wait for their contract to run out and then get the next subsidized exactly. version. Exactly. So what if you did that, where PS Five comes in five years, but you have in between a stopgap PS Four Plus that you don't have to buy. But, yeah, uh, but that's well, yeah. I'm okay with that as long as. But do the it games work on have it? exclusive games? Yeah, the games have to because work on everything. If, that's the if thing. You're, yeah, if you're gonna tell me that, hey, um, we're, we're releasing a new console this year, but there's gonna be Uncharted Four is exclusive to this console. Right, right, yeah. I'm gonna be pissed. Like yeah, that's ridiculous. That, you can't yeah. do that. You know. I mean, I think it might be more along the lines of the new 3ds or even iphone where you see some games very few have like oh it's exclusive to iphone 6 because of you know blah 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 but 95 percent of things you know do carry over i just wonder from a marketing money standpoint if a refresh does reinvigorate sort of their money pool um especially as parts and things get cheaper if they can maintain because look it's much easier to charge 400 dollars for a ps4 plus in two years than keep your ps4 at two at 400 dollars, right because then you're justifying that steady price by saying hey it's it's better, just like Nintendo isn't dropping the 3DS. They're, they're keeping at that by saying, we've got this extra power. So I don't like that idea, but I, I wonder if they're... It just their gets toes tricky the because the, the, dip, the big difference is between like um, what Apple does in here um, is that if you're going to release that new console, you want people to adapt it, obviously, to buy it. 
So mm-hmm. then how do you incentivize them to buy that version? Right. Yeah. You make games that are exclusive, right? Exclusive experiences. Because that's what is Nintendo doing? They're saying if you want to buy, like if you want to play this new game, you're going to have to upgrade to this new 3DS, right? Sure. But I mean, like phones, iPhone 6, if you have an iPhone 5, you don't need a 6. You just want it because it's a little bit better. So, so like, I, I, I don't think it would be targeting the upgrade market. I think it would just be targeting the non the PS4 owner market. market. I mean, I, I, iPhones are a different thing because they are so, so popular. Like, well, not just that. They still maintain the same platform. You know what but I mean? But this yeah. would maintain so, the same yeah, but as long as the ex- again, as I said, if there's n- I have no issue with it. If, yeah. As long as there are the experiences I can have on my PS4 that's sitting right here is the same as this PS4 Plus in terms yeah. of uh, in terms of game. Like it, obviously, I I'm, I would be aware that this new version could have maybe a more polished game or more better running game or whatever, or let's let's say supports 4K streaming. Mm-hmm. Those are tiny little marginal upgrades. It doesn't make me feel like a- an idiot for being an early adopter. Because then you're bund- just basically punishing me for being an early adopter. What if they bundled in – I'm just picking a random game. Mass Effect 4 is exclusive to PS4 Plus and it's bundled in. So for $400, you get this upgraded PS4 that can do 4K. It's got a little bit more power and you get the exclusive Mass Effect 4 uh, disc. I mean, it's going to sell, obviously, especially because that's a big, big franchise. Uh, I mean, um, that would be a jerk move, though. <laughs> like, but, but isn't I, it a jerk move every year for Apple to release a new phone? I, again, I think it's... It's, I, it's, a, different, different. it's a different ecosystem. It's, it's just completely different. The yeah, be, be, cell phones are... It's just completely different from consoles. Consoles since the 80s are... We, we're trained, okay, you get one of these every like few years, and that's just the way it yeah. is. People hate change. People yeah. really hate change. And, and more importantly, also, like, I, I just think that there is an element of, like, uh, like what you said, there's the trend, like, the whole idea of, like, you know, this is what I'm comfortable with. And I just mm-hmm. I, I just don't think that there is any way that you're going to be able to convince people right now. Like, if you do it slowly, slowly, like, let's say next generation, you cut it shorter or this generation, you cut it a little bit shorter and then the next one even shorter and tighter. Maybe that could work. But then you also get into the whole idea of the business structure is completely different for it yeah. as well, right? Because like a phone is al- almost always it's subsidized. Very few people buy the phone for its retail price, you know, or yeah. list price. Almost the majority of people will buy the subsidized version. There is no subsidized console yet. But it does inject a new like ball of energy into that market by releasing a new phone every year because then people who don't have a smartphone or are on Android or, or whatever they're doing have more of an incentive to move over. And, and like I totally am like with you guys. I just wonder from a not consumer but from the company. I mean, look, we're looking at a $180 Mortal Kombat Collector's Edition and there's a market for it. We look at the DLC for Evolve costing $15 for a monster. Yeah, None but of it's, those- not, it's not in millions. It's not even hundreds of thousands of people, right? No, I, I know. I'm just saying none so- of those are in our favor but they're still happening because it's it's the money. No, they are. That stuff is in favor in terms of like, look, the varied amount of them is not. But the fact that uh, a company knows that it's got a loyal audience base and they can release 5,000 collector's edition and sell out through them like that. Yeah, that that is in the favor of the fan in terms of like you're rewarding your most <laughs> hardcore audience. And Max, right? and Max touched on this earlier, but... That would be hell for developers. Like for there to be another like PlayStation Four that can that's a little bit more powerful next year. Like, what do you do then? I mean, do you have to have like a downscaled version? As, and, yeah. yeah. I mean, keep in mind, like it takes these companies. You you said it yourself. It takes them years to to get the full potential. Yeah. Look so, at Last Guardian. I, I, think I still think be... that Last Guardian was they were ready, maybe or close to a PS3 release, and then they're like, you know what? Let's just redo this and make it uh, like up res it and make it run on a PS4. So it's just one of those things that these boxes are too different. Like they are such different boxes when when they're released that they they require different coding, a different process or whatever. And if they become generic, which is what we spoke of in the future, because I think they will as we go on, then you get to a point where you can do a yearly cyclical upgrade where right. the there's just a stamp of a brand and the box itself is a very generic in, in terms of like it's the same development but process. But at the same time, like think about PC. If I put in a better graphics card, that doesn't change what the developer does. Well, but, they they have to develop for for certain 
uh, configurations. They do that. Oh, sure. But I'm, I'm just saying, like, I guess, I guess the way that I think of it is more along the lines of not an upgrade, but more just placating the people who haven't bought in yet. So if in 2017 the PS4 is still on the shelf and you're – Gabe, what you mentioned, you're, someone asks you, should I buy a PS4 or PC? PCs are going to be so much farther along. You're going to tell them even more strongly. Yeah, but that PC. has always been the case. But what I'm saying is, what if you didn't think about upgrade or replacement, but just that was the version? So they, they clear out the old PS4s, and now they just have this slightly modified PS4 for okay. the same price. Okay, then you get to this. Um, how many people right now are happy with their PS4s and Xbox Ones? Plenty, but I'm saying no, 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 no. I'm talking about how many people complain daily. There's not enough exclusives. There's not enough games. Tons, tons. of people, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're taking an 18 million people on the PS4 owners, right? And you're telling them, oh, you're not happy with your PS4? <laughs> Buy this one. Try. Yeah, this one. It, it wouldn't work. It, no, I'm not. I'm not but, I'm, but you're not. Get, it's nothing different except a slightly. It's. I'm not. I'm, we're. we're Canceling out exclusive games. Yeah, okay. it's just it's just a cyclical increase of power of the system that's put on shelves to entice new consumers. So you're not reselling them the same PS4 every single Christmas, and they're like, not this year, not this year. You see a little upgrade, you're like now I want to dive in. Sure, that that could be that certainly could be the uh, case. I just think again, as long as there's not exclusive experiences on that box, yeah. then it could work. Uh, and it goes back to the whole idea of just technological upgrading, and it, it's just that's the future. You know what I mean? Like whether we like it or we don't. Uh, I mean, it's obviously we could dictate how it works. Like if nobody buys it and if nobody decides to adapt it, sure, there is going to be obviously people who, who they're going to sit there and they're going to be like, okay, it's not working. We got to go back to what works. Right. That could be the case. I just think again, if if the idea of nothing but graphics is important if that's the only way that the gaming market would work then the consoles wouldn't be selling well because fact yeah. is the superior the best experience graphically is going to be on pc nine times out of ten if not ten out of ten right. right so unless if it's optimized completely to run on a console it's going to be always better on the pc mm -hmm. so with that logic why are we selling 25 million 30 million consoles in a year and a half mm -hmm. you know it shows you that there is people that like that simple, uh, the people who are willing to give up uh, having the most realistic looking world for, I, I come in on the couch, I throw my Madden disc in, I play a couple matches of Madden, and I'm out of there. Yeah, sure. and, 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 and those people don't seem like they're going to be willing to, to spend 400 every other year or whatever. But, I mean, it's going there. Uh, you guys said it. The future is that. Uh, these incremental upgrades, uh, and, and I believe that as well. But I think just right now, same with 4K, it's just not the time. So for for let's say 2015, 2016, do we see a? I mean, maybe we'll get a slim line, but I'm talking about a truly improved PS4, Xbox One, Gabe. Yes or no? In the next year and a half? I don't think so because uh, I mean I might be wrong, and I'm sure people will correct me. Uh, <laughs> I, I think you can do 4K through USB as well. So if we can somehow get that working people connect their usb cables to their ps4 yeah, yeah dude like it's a thing i, mean, yeah. I don't know i i think that um in general uh the other element that i think consoles are going to struggle with is um upgrading just for the sake of gaming uh of a sit down mm -hmm. gaming experience right because that's what they offer right uh, and more and more people are going to mobile for their games like from the general public right like imagine on iPhone in 2016, I'm sure you could probably run a pretty good version of FIFA and Madden, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So with that in mind, how many people are then going to want to upgrade to a new console just to play that game at home, you know? So I think that the future for consoles is really going to be, um, uh, might actually adapt the functionalities of like, let's say a cable box, right? Where uh, cable companies are going to team up with, um, uh, console manufacturers to so that then you could add more value to the box itself right like right. where because a phone is a phone and then it's also uh, an application thing and then it also allows you gaming right so it's like you're buying the phone obviously predominantly for the first function of being a phone to talk and text then so you more get fully all featured app. console would be easier to sell yeah, yeah but like whereas, for for, yeah. for 2015 2016 do you think no. this has happened no, no okay. i think no. i think we'll get i think that most likely we will get some sort of a 
uh, upgraded, like, you know, slimmer down or something like that, but, but nothing, nothing the internals. I, no, I, I don't think that there will be anything that requires you to uh, upgrade to play those new games. Yeah, because keep in mind, stuff. man, we don't even have, like, games that are taking advantage of this yet. So, I mean, not, I, I say, I say no, I, although I do see the way it happening is more of a stealth move to keep up with the specs in the same way that TVs keep up with specs and PCs, not a move to upgrade people. Like, go buy our new PS4, but in the same way that phones are upgrading and people are more and more, you know, walking away from consoles or PCs even to, to mobile, like, yeah. you keep them up to date and that's the way you keep people at least in your, you know, slice the pie is, is by stealth refreshing them. It doesn't even have to be a... And the new PS4 at E3, but just and now PS4, you know, plus 4% speed or, you know, whatever it may be, that they just find more efficient ways to manufacture these things. But no, I don't think there will be a refresh um, if I had, you know, a gun to my head. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, okay. That was a pretty cool discussion. Now we have time for some pretty cool games that are currently out right now. You don't, have, you don't need 4K for these. You don't need a PS4 Not Plus. Not at all. <laughs> um, I think we should start with Life is Strange because that's like the most recent release. We are going to touch back on Dying Light. Um, but... Gabe, you beat the first episode. Yeah, I um, did. And I am almost there. I got to say that this is an episodic game from Don't Nod, the team who did Remember Me. Um, and the thing that like I love about it, regardless of the lip syncing, which is atrocious, <laughs> it is. Um, the thing I love is it establishes an environment that so few games touch on and sort of a mood and a vibe that I feel is very unique. And it, it almost like, it, it's a very much like a point-click adventure, except with, really big 3D environments and conversations. And the one thing it made me think is, like, why is Telltale not doing a better job with their uh, games? All right, so, so a couple things I want to ask you before anything else. <laughs> yes. Oh, go ahead, Max. Um, I was just wondering, give us a little bit, like, because uh, I, I don't know much yeah, about the game. The game. Okay, like, so, give us, like, um, sure. because like, you said it's an interesting world and everything. Sure. Like, Life, give us the is foundation. Strange. What Life is, is it? Strange follows a girl, an 18-year-old girl named Max, who just um, transferred. Max? Her. Max, really? yes, it's you. Wow. Maxine, though. I'm oh. guessing you're not Maxine. Oh. Um, she uh, she transferred to this boarding school. You don't really know much about her except that she's a photographer and she's very interested um, in photos. And she's kind of an outcast at this new school. Very early in the game, and this is shown in all the trailers, she sort of unlocks this power within herself to rewind time. And so the game is about moving around these different environments, you know, looking at things, speaking to people, doing some you know decisions that then it says at the top this will affect you know have consequences of the future. Um, but sort of the twist is, A, it's in a high school setting and sort of that whole theme. And, and two or B, I don't remember what I said, uh, you can rewind time. So like you can, there's an early instance where an uh, annoying girl raised her hand, answers a question um, and says, you know, it was this artist who did blah, blah, blah. You could rewind time and then from her you gain the correct answer and now your teacher's impressed and you're able to leave class earlier. Oh, so stuff like that. Or, now, you know, can a, you go back far enough to change something like one of those decisions where it says this will? Yes. Yeah. So it'll, <laughs> put, it'll pop up these little like thick mm. dots on sort of the time exists mm -hmm. on this like spiral, and it'll put a thick dot where there was a kind of defining moment. Uh -huh. So there's an instance again early on which involves a gun and, and someone obviously dying, um, and and you can go back and and fix slash change. Oh, that. oh, oh, wait. Okay. Let me, let me interject really quick there. You yeah. have to, it's part, that's part of the story. That that's sort of the introduction of it, but there is instances like you're, you're speaking of the principal yeah, and you're the deciding principal is the big you're one. Gonna, principal, you're deciding, are you going to, um, you know, report a kid or not report a kid? You can report him, see how the principal reacts, rewind it, not report him, see how the principal reacts, rewind it um, again. And, and so there's a little bit of interesting. like, interesting. It, it's, it's kind of, of like it's the choose, anti like, what, yeah. what is your best like it's not as locked in like for those of you that have played telltale it's like yeah. you make a decision and that's what you go yeah. forward and with. it's the anti telltale Whereas, you manipulate the decisions back and forth like to whatever satisfies you the best yeah so the thing about telltale is those countdown timers man they pressure you into picking something that might not necessarily be what you want to pick but that timer's there and that's it you made your choice and you're going on here if you make a choice, you think about it, you go back a couple times, you see a, the character's reaction, you, mm -hmm. you have a lot more time to, to actually do what you want. And Telltale, uh, it tells you you can do what you want, but you're really not. So, um, this game is so awesome. The the setting, the high school setting, and the fact that you're, you know, a, a high school girl. Uh, we don't get to play as many high school girls. And uh, Zach, um, I wanted to... <laughs> <laughs> that was awkward silence, ladies and gentlemen. Zach, uh, I wanted to ask you, by the way. You don't get yeah. to play as many uh, high school girls. All right. 
the silence as, as, silence, <laughs> silence. as far as you've played you didn't yeah. the bucket that's where i saw you end your last video that's as far as yeah. you've gotten that's where i am unfortunately oh. i um i guess my big question to throw it back to you is do the choices have more of an impact than we've come to expect from Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, you know, so on and so forth? Already with the pr um, spoilers, I guess, like mild spoilers. And I, I, I mean, there's no way to get into it without spoilers. So, yes, yeah, spoilers for Life is Strange. Watch out, Zach. You're playing it. Um, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. All right, the principal thing. You, you, yeah. did, you did it. You chose to yeah. not report the, mm -hmm. the character. I mm -hmm. chose to report the character. All right, so later in the game, I get I get an email from my mom, I, I guess, because mom emails us like that. She, you she, have a cell phone. You get emails, text. Yeah. It's kind of, so kind of uh, mom emails us and says, hey, the principal called and said you're making up all this, all these lies about this, like, student that's, like, you know, all A on a roll type. He's a very prestigious student. Mm -hmm. You know, he comes from a family with money and stuff like that. And you rent him out to the principal, and the principal just tells your mom, like, hey, your daughter's making shit, uh, stuff up. You know fix it or whatever and i don't know what happens when you do the other thing but i'm assuming you don't get a pissed off email from mom and already from that max says all right there's no way i'm not trusting that that character anymore the principal next time we will lie we will deceive him we will do whatever we so can does, that, does anything substantial play out in this episode or is it you're just hoping that it changes next episode because uh, this is a five-parter yeah substantial no uh so it is it's still along the lines of walking dead where it's more of conversational twists and some sort of side little extra or lack of bits but nothing like oh my god now this character you know now you go to the observatory instead of the conservatory no you're going to the same place um okay the game this episode ends where it begins the same way it begins that's how it ends it's okay. interesting though because the game is reviewing like not too hot right mm -hmm. like i mean like sixes 6.5s and everything uh, a lot of the complaints are from like a technical side from what I've noticed. Yeah. Right? Like people talk about the fact that um, it has interesting design, but the facial animation and the uh, uh, lip sync like you mentioned and uh, other stuff is pretty poorly executed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is that like is it like so noticeable that it takes you out? Because if you have a game that's primarily about story and the figures that are telling you the story are poorly executed, I could see how that wouldn't obviously affect your experience right because there's no gameplay here yeah. i mean the, the lip syncing is pretty bad to me it doesn't pull me out but then again i vibe really well with the scene and sort of what's going on i vibe with the scene because he is a high school girl at heart <laughs> Let, let's rewind that I, 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 <laughs> let's go back i get along with the main character and i wonder if a lot of sort of the and i've read some of them saying like oh my god i was just i couldn't believe they actually you know, use this writing. It's so it, it's, lame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The writing is so cheesy, and that's the worst part of the game. But I still like it a lot. Um, just if wonder if writing, some people. But if the writing is cheesy, isn't that the whole game? No. Like the, the story I mean, is when, the game. When does the writing get cheesy? Because where I've played, I don't think it's. I have. How, how many times? How many times have you heard of Hella? Yeah, but but like what? How many times in 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 Gears of War or stuff do people say stupid stuff? <laughs> I, I don't know. It hasn't bothered me yet. I mean, and, and that's fine. Maybe it won't bother you, and, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, I the, guess it depends also if the game is taking itself seriously, right? Because well, Gears yeah. of War is like an action uh, movie. This, so it's like this, this game touches on some dark stuff. Like, you know, there's a, you know, there's a gun in school. Like, it, it, it's touching on subjects that are dark. Uh -huh. And so, so the game's not necessarily... It's not a lighthearted game whatsoever. There's bullying. There's massive bullying. And I, and I feel like the detail in the world is at a pretty high level. Like, if you think about Walking Dead... Let's just talk season two. Clementine can walk up and be like, oh, no, there's a pile of bones. But, like, it's not like you're examining the bones or really gleaning anything. This, first of all, I feel like Max, the main character, has more, she thinks deeper about things. Second of all, like, I don't know, but, like, I'm finding posters of missing people. I'm seeing my teacher's photographs in the. It's the one same girl. There's only one missing girl. Okay, a missing person. But yep. I'm just saying, to me, the world building feels like. I walked out onto the courtyard, and I don't know how many areas in the game. So far, I've been inside the school, outside the school, and in the dorms. You got three um, more, I believe. Okay. To me, it feels like this could be... Fl I guess I feel like I'm less on a roller coaster car, and I'm more free form going through this environment instead of Walking Dead. Like The thing I hate most about Telltale, it doesn't have to be Walking Dead, Wolf Among Us, is when you're bumping to the wall and your character's like moving yeah, like yeah. diagonally along the yeah. the boundary line and like that just maybe that maybe that allows for a more 
tight storyline. But to me here, I like the fact that this feels more um, imaginative. All right. All right. And let me ask you so, this. Uh, so you, you think that this is a good foundation? Because, again, to be fair, it's an episodic thing, right? So it's like it could get better and better from this point on. I'll right? tell you my favorite moment thus far. And, Gabe, you can tell me if you think it gets better or worse first half or second because I've heard it's pretty short, sub two hours. Um, my favorite moment was I was talking to a kid and he was a jerk and he wouldn't show me his uh, – photography portfolio because he asked me a question about who took a, the, the famous falling soldiers photograph huh? or drew the picture and I just picked a random person because I didn't know and he was like oh so sorry I guess you can't see it I rewound time broke the fourth wall typed into my computer looked up the answer answered it correctly and then got to see in his portfolio and something like that to me just was like a really a clever way to kind of utilize decisions and and choices that almost made me feel very much in the role of Max whereas I she has a lot of internal dialogue as well, which is something that you don't get a lot of in Telltale. Like she'll be walking and just start talking to herself about you know certain things, mm. like observations that to me, it, honestly, it felt like a like chick flick movie, and, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean more of like like why me? I can't believe I have to go through this. And I guess maybe that's where some of the cheese comes through. But at the same time, to me, it like it defined the character a lot more than. When, when you're just walking around as them and, and picking the choices. Uh, Zach, one thing I wanted to ask you, how, do you get a sense that there is like something super crazy going on here? Like there's all these theories. If you go into the spoilers, Neil Gaff thread, God, mm -hmm. that is a rabbit hole. You do not want to go down. All so right. Is the second half, is the second half as fun as, or does it get better, worse? I mean, of the episode, it, it keeps going. Um, the second okay. half is better. Uh, th oh, there's, cool. there, there's def there's, there's, and there's not like a full reveal of what this power is or what's going on. No, not at all. Okay, that's Is it ever addressed? Is she aware that she yes. has Oh, yeah, yeah, she's fully aware that she has this power and she okay. comments it uh, comments on it and she's dumbfounded by it uh, pretty often and she she eventually uses it to her to her advantage. Zack is on one of the key places where she really embraces the fact that she has this power. She can't get into her dorm because this bully and her and her goons are basically blocking it. And to me it feels like even more than Telltale, the game that it reminds me the most of is Alan Wake because of sort of the subject matter and because of the way that it's sort of paced. Alan Wake was also very introspective, and he didn't know what was going on around him. And part of the allure of that game with subpar gameplay for the most part was what happens next, what is this mystery, what happened to my wife, what's going on, this supernatural element, how does it all factor in? And I think if this, this series can kind of keep leading you on with that intrigue, it's going to be a, a fun time, even if the lip-syncing isn't great even if oh there's not a whole lot quote unquote to do in the game i mean i'm enjoying talking to everybody gabe did you play it like at that pace of talking and seeing everything did you rush through it more quickly? no I, I didn't rush through it at all um, okay I, I interacted with everything as much as i could and, and you, you mentioned intrigue there's layers of intrigue to this game because oh cool all right so our the teacher he, he's famous for for something that doesn't matter right all right but the missing girl Apparently there's a rumor there, there's a rumor going around that she slept with the teacher and yeah. you know and now she's missing so I'm thinking man like did he sleep with her and she's you know threatening to talk or did he get her pregnant and you know he killed her like we don't know and they don't even touch upon that for the rest of the episode uh the rest of the episode is basically your interactions with Chloe and you know it tail ends the same way that it started with with I, I so you yes. feel rewarded for interacting with all those people or like what you said, for example, with the photography portfolio, like, like yes, that sounds like a cool moment, but is that significant in any way to yeah. the world? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. is there something in that portfolio that by seeing that it gives you a hint to something else or is it just kind of like, hey, try this mini game? Well, no. what it, to me, what it feels like is one of those cases and it's either glass half full, glass half empty of like, okay, I'm hoping that all of this stuff pays off. Mm -hmm. Like, it'll build greater understanding through the five episodes. Mm -hmm. And by the mm -hmm. way, they've set a specific release date, one per month or every five, six weeks, which is really great instead of just when it's finished. If it does pay off, like, hey, it touches back on this missing girl who slept with the teacher potentially, then yes. If, if that's just like an odd moment that they put in, then no. If, if maybe something – and I guess that's where I'm – hoping or putting more of my own thought into the game maybe. And I don't know about you, Gabe, but like I'm hoping that some of these things I see or talk to people, I'll, you know, come back and talk to them again or that will factor in. You know, there's all this mention, um, I don't know if you even get there, but of this Vortex Club, I'm, I'm guessing yeah. at some point. 
in this episode do you get there? Uh, no, you do not. Okay, so there's all this mention of this like secret club at school called the Vortex Club, and people mm -hmm. talk about they're they're you're not cool enough to be there, or it's the mm -hmm. most fun time, and mm -hmm. this missing girl didn't even like I, a lot of stuff. So if it gets back to it, then then yes, but I guess that's we're like fingers crossed that they really deliver on the kind of cool foundation they've established. Oh, okay. Well, Zach, did did you even hear that? The the part I told you that okay, this missing girl slept with the teacher. Did did you? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I, I tried to talk to everybody. All right, so by doing that, you get that. You wouldn't, uh, my, another friend of mine that played it, he didn't even talk to the person that said that, so he had no idea that was even happening. So, so I, like, I, I feel payoff, that, though. yeah, that's how it's rewarding you. By... Well, that's the problem, though. Is it going to pay off? Because at the end of the day, um, like, how narrated is the experience going to be? Right. Like, you so know, it's like I, mean? I need how a brain check on that. Yeah, so I don't have an yeah. answer for So you. I think that to be fair, like I guess this just comes to the idea of: is it fair to judge an episodic thing based on one episode? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's an interesting point. I mean, and, and we can judge pretty, it by. I, I finished I mean, it. I, I mean, fair or not fair? At the end of the day, consumerism and being pro-consumer, of course, this is you $5. should. Yeah, yeah, you should evaluate it by no means. I'm just saying that from what it sounds like to me. It's almost like this is a really good starting point. It's flawed for sure. It's not perfect, but it's a good starting point that has had a lot of hooks that has now like it's really going to depend on episodes two, three, four, oh, and five. For the, for the final score, absolutely. I still think that, look, it gained some benefit of the doubt because we have seen successful episodes in, in Walking Dead play out. And the fact that this is doing episodic when, aside from Telltale, very few people do. And I think more should. Yeah, and at five dollars, whether it pans out or not, I think this is a cool enough experience that you're not going to feel gypped out of that money. I mean, you pay more than that for an hour and a half movie. This, to me, is fulfilling enough and fun. It's an it's enough intrigue and fun that like I'm happy. If it was twenty dollars, then okay, now we got to get real dicey. Is the final product going to pan out or not? But at five dollars, if it doesn't pay off, if it does, I think where it becomes where that becomes an issue is if you've spent the full 25 or whatever it is. And then the experience and is then it's like, what? It bombs out at the end. Then we can sort of be like, you know, that had some great ideas, maybe the first one, but the full experience. But at this point, I, there's no way to See, go. And the best part of the game so far, Zach hasn't even experienced, which is uh, the relationship between the two main characters, or what I see as the two main characters, which is Max and Chloe. Chloe mm -hmm. is the girl that you save from, from getting shot, I guess. Well, I, I, I know. I'm just... I felt bad for spoiling it. And their 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 relationship is really yeah. interesting. Say spoiler alert after the spoiler. Yeah. That's what I always do. Uh, I'll say the spoiler and I'm like spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's fine. It happens in the first 15 minutes. The, yeah. Their relationship is really interesting. You get a sense that um, I mean, I hate to even bring up the topic, but I kind of get a feeling that that Chloe might be a lesbian because she has a connection with the missing girl. You know, it, it was like her best friend and, and they loved each other. She she has all these pictures in her room. And, she, you know, she hates that she's missing. And, you know, she heard that she slept with this teacher. So, um, that, that, Wait, go ahead. Do you get the sense that this is kind of like, uh, almost like a TV show? Like, I, I get the sense that this feels like a cool episode of a TV show. And it's something that I've wanted games to do for a while, which is like, frequently release episodes of a interactive TV show that it is about the story and it is leading you on. Because, like, I feel like as much as Walking Dead is about the story... It's very gamified, yeah. In in a way, this does feel to more me, like a TV I show. I, yeah. I, I love Walking Dead. Oh, I love it too. Yeah. But it, to me, it feels very like just something. I don't know. Like this one gives off much more of a sense of like you're playing through an episode of Lost or, or something like that because of. Well, I think then it gets dicey though, right? Because is it still a game? Oh, like, it totally. You know, is. Oh, yeah. No, it's a, there's puzzles. It's the, a game. Yeah, yeah. So that's the 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 element there, I guess, is like to me, uh, games like this. Obviously, it's all about the decisions. I don't think they've yet capitalized on the whole idea of having s s branching stories and things where, like, it's rewarding. Like the decisions yeah. really have impact. Like it, they're anchored, and then it's like, uh, like you know, let's say there's a few buckets, and then the more decisions you make, like you get drips into the bucket, and then at the end, this is the bucket that you end up with because of all the decisions you end right. up with. They haven't really done that yet. At the end of the day, Walking Dead still ends. Yes, there's some differing elements, but at the end of the day, the final point that yeah. you reach is very exactly. similar, yeah. if and not this... exactly the same for everybody else. So 
I, I think that it's going to be interesting to see whether or not they're going to be able to capitalize on that. And to me, the thing that really grabbed my attention from what you guys have spoke of is I love the time idea because I think that's really interesting that you're taking a game where it's all about decisions, but you're giving me a tool to change my mind constantly. Yeah, and I think that also is kind of what separates this and makes it feel more like a TV show. In Walking Dead, almost every every conversation dialogue involves a couple of those four, you know, four option choices. Here, it's far less frequent, at least the first half of the episode. Um, and so to me, it seems more about the overall story versus your story. And I'm hoping that that leads to a more complex and crazy plot because they have a little bit more free will instead of being like, and then blah, blah, blah said, or like, you know, the Walking Dead type thing of this person died or what happened here. Mm -hmm. Instead of having to have like these, you know, chopped up four little scenes that could take place here, they're able to... From what Gabe's saying, it sounds like they're not going with, oh, you end up in you know, running away with this Chloe girl or staying at school. It's more guided with a couple choices that kind of sprinkle yeah. your, your experience. Yeah, well, I mean, this first episode for sure is super guided. You're going to end where you begin mm -hmm. with that giant tornado. You don't know what's going. You wake up. You wake up from a dream in class. There's like this crazy tornado, not a tornado, a hurricane, whatever they called it. And it's coming. I made that same mistake. <laughs> and, and at the end of the game, it happens. And... Then you come back and, and it tells you, okay, in five days, this is going to happen. So the rest of the episode, it's going to lead up to that. I'm assuming that, that that's the giant climax, whether this giant tornado is going to destroy the city or not, because that, that's the repercussions. It's this giant thing. And, you know, remember, we can rewind time. We're going to go back, maybe see if our actions can, can uh, maybe stop this from happening, things like that. But there's so many little hooks. There's also yeah. the, 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 the strange girl. I don't know if you talked. I'm sure you did. Um, in the beginning, she's in class, and she's, like, the other sort of an outcast. And mm -hmm. apparently there's something special about her because the, the security guard is, like, a huge jerk to her. He's there picking on her. And you have a choice of either taking a picture of it and keeping it as evidence or stepping in and helping and, and, and you know, telling him to back off and confronting him. And that cop is, is Chloe's dad, so all these uh, relationships are, are sort of mixed and they're intertwined in a certain way. And, and, and it's really interesting. It, I think... Yeah. Cool. It's, it's definitely worth the five bucks. At least, you know, drop the five dollars, see what you think. And something that surprises me kind of outside of the gameplay, the choice, the storyline. Think about the uproar when Assassin's Creed Unity did not include a female model. Think about the uproar of, you know, Tomb Raider in the past. We finally get a game that features a non-sexualized teen girl. And she's like, well, adult girl. She's 18. Protagonist. She's pretty level-headed. She's got this cool power. Nobody makes mention of them doing that. You know, we get all this mention of like, oh, they didn't do this. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, that's just media. That, Poly Polygon gave it an eight. <laughs> that's, yeah. I mean, I'm not, even, I'm not even saying it's a review well. I'm just saying I think that don't not. Because I, I, I think, some... yeah, I think that at the end of the day, from what it sounds like to me, it's like what we spoke of, like you guys, um, from what you're saying and everything, it does sound like you guys understand that it's a flawed game and it's not perfect, mm -hmm. but it's a great starting point. Like it's yeah. it's got so much intrigue that like you want to see what's going to happen next. So for my weekly food analogy, this is a good appetizer. Yeah, I just think that they should get a little more. But the meal less. better be good. Yeah, for sure. And, and again, just outside of the game, I think we give so much press to what's being bad in, in gaming and it would be cool well, to see generally people. speaking like like that's in anything right like yeah, let's I, be I fair we always for some reason like you know like you have people who will take their time to tell you how terrible something is but like when you buy a product how often will you go up on the website and write a positive review for sure right? I, I just do think whereas that if it's terrible you're gonna like you need to like get it out of your sure yeah. i just think if this game was 34 year old you know max the man max in his hometown i don't know that it has the same like, it adds something by being this high school girl in this high school environment. And, like, that's one of the coolest parts of the game is that it's taking us someplace that games rarely let us experience. All right. And, and we should that's move cool. on to Dying Light. But uh, yes. one, la one last thing. There is an amazing <laughs> – there is an. You should move on, but one last All thing. All right. There is an amazing um, The Spirit Within reference. Uh, there's a lot of pop culture little small references. But is that, is that, isn't that the final fantasy yes movie? yes um oh, <laughs> uh, you pick up a usb well, this is square enix yeah it is yeah, you pick it? Yeah, yeah you pick up a usb or whatever and it has like the file uh, of it or whatever and it says oh people like to act like spirit within isn't one of the best sci-fi movies out of all time but it is like and i just thought that was amazing but yeah that's it 
Um, All right, let's let's transition to something a little more violent and uh, typical, which is Dying Light with its zombies. Now, this game has blown up since we last spoke about it. It's got over like 1.2 million players. Um, it's become kind of a, a huge surprise success, I think. I mean, people, it, it is the only big game in January, but people have really attached to it in a way that I didn't think they would. Gabe, you've beaten it. Yeah. From your your standpoint, where does where does things pan out, or how did they pan out? Exactly like I said they would. Last week I said, hey, this is going to review in the high sevens, low eights, and, and that's what's happening. Um, just major um, websites, uh, IGN gave it like an eight, I believe, and, and Polygon gave it um, uh, in the sevens as well, and I think GameSpot gave it an eight. So it's reviewing well. It's been in the top five um, for Twitch, uh, people streaming it. People love streaming this thing. There's tons of side quests. Yeah, there's lots of streams. It's 30 hours long or whatever. Yeah, yeah it took forever, man. Um, I finished it last night, finished it co-op. Interesting thing, the game does not let you finish in co-op. You can play the whole thing co-op right up until the last part. It, it, you know, you go into the door and it says, okay, this is the last section of the game. It's like, Take leave your friends your friend. out. Yeah, and yeah. Dude, that's exactly what happens. I was recording. Really? Yeah, I was recording my Let's Play with a friend of mine. And, you know, yeah. it, it was awkward that... It separated us right at the end. He's like, oh, you got to do this part solo. So did, did he go into his own ending? Yes. Or did you... Okay, so you both like walked into separate endings. Yeah. No, no, same ending. Yeah, no, right? well, no, yeah. Well, same okay. ending, but yeah. individualized. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah we're, we were no longer in the lobby. Okay. Um, so a couple of our main questions about this game last week were, one, how does the progression, you know, pan out throughout the game? Two, does the combat, you know, get better um, and three, does the what you're doing, like the environments, the zombies change up? I don't know. You uh, know okay. do, do one at a time so I can answer those. those really quickly. Okay, so one, does the progression pay off? Like, does your character feel like a different man by the end of the game? You feel like a badass at the end. In the beginning, okay, cool. in the beginning you guys have played, so your weapons break constantly. And mm -hmm. that, you know, that was my big uh, problem with it early on. Your weapons just break, and it sucks. It's not fun. Towards the end, you have a weapon. It takes a lot longer to break. And what, uh, it has more slots for you to fix it. Instead of fixing it maybe two times, you can fix it five times. And so right. you have a weapon for longer. Um, and also, your skills you acquire are what a, cool at the end? Um, some of them, you can do a windmill attack. You can do ground stomps. You, uh, yeah, uh, your progression <laughs> as a Tell character. Was such a confident salesman. Yeah, we, we do a good grappling job. Grappling hook? <laughs> oh, the grappling hook is the best. Uh, another major concern was, man, there's no fast travel. There's a lot of running in this game. The city is big, and it takes a long time to get from one place to another. But once you get to level 12, you get to unlock this grappling hook. It, it's basically like Batman. Spider, yeah, you're Spider-Man, dude. You go, oh, yeah, you, yeah, you go from one place to another super quickly. I no longer wanted fast travel. I wanted to swing around like crazy, and it especially helps against the volatiles at night. Um, so yes, I, I think it pays off because. In the beginning, you're so fragile, it's more of a survival game. And towards the end, you're just as badass and nothing can stop you. 50 zombies can come at me. I have a sword that decapitates them all in one swing, so the progression is definitely there. What was the second part? The combat. Just like, does it feel better? Is it increase in variety, weapon-wise? I mean, you, you get skills. There, you One of the skill points is you unlock a slide. Uh, you upgrade that. You can unlock a slide and break the zombie's leg, so now they're on the floor. Uh, like I said, there's a ground stop. There's this windmill attack. You get a uh, heavy attack. Um, you hold the trigger, and instead of just swinging, you swing extra hard, basically. And it takes more of your stamina. So it, it, it grows to, uh, to, throughout the game. So it evolves. Uh, people said, though, that they got tired of the combat just because there's so many hours of it. But mm -hmm. I felt that towards the end, the combat was more of a joke. Like, you didn't have to sit there and fight all these zombies anymore. You already leveled up. You already have all these great weapons. You just zip line past the zombies. It doesn't matter. So then at that point, what are you doing in the game? Story progression. Uh, you know. But aren't, is, what, what are you doing besides killing and, and moving? Well, is there, is there anything? You're moving. You're just moving? Just like point A to point? Like, what? walk me through. Well, there, there are stronger zombies. Back half game mission. Back half Like, game. are we still just killing clearing out areas, walking. I mean, like, if you're saying the killing is a joke, then what are you... Doing? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean... Because I'm trying to formulate a, <laughs> an eloquent way of saying this, uh, doing? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, d uh, different zombie types. I mean, obviously, okay. the giant tank zombies, you, you can't just run away from. They're crazy fast. Okay, so so the generic zombies are what become a joke. Yeah, basically. yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. So, okay. I mean, there's... 
right up until the end, they they have one last enemy type pretty much at all times. So they go from regular zombies to stronger regular zombies to this giant tank one to an even bigger giant tank one that just runs at you like crazy. And then they have like a screamer. They have one that like vomits at you. They have, you know, the ones that blow up. They, you know, your standard stuff. But they spread them out throughout the game. You're not getting them all in the beginning. So you know, it lends some decent variety to, to the gameplay towards the end. And you do, this isn't really a spoiler, but you do unlock a second area. Yeah, um, yeah. Different city, yes. Is that a better area, worse, uh, just different? It's an actual city. The first one, it's slums. Yeah. Okay, so is, is the city better? Is it more fun? Mm. Just different? Yeah, it's just different. Does, um, it, does it not matter? Does it, is it just like, oh, a different skin over the same kind of gameplay? Uh, taller buildings, um, you know, you've got to climb more. Uh, but, I mean, it, it's a city. I mean, how different can a city be? really yeah i mean here's my thing about the game and max i know you played a couple hours yeah when i and unfortunately i didn't get that much farther i had a bad stomach bug and i like was not even capable of he almost turned into a zombie i almost turned it was probably dying light um i i have like this huge fear of throwing up so like i looked up techniques for not throwing up and i felt like i was gonna throw (laughs) up so here i am like literally rubbing washcloths with like cold water on my face and neck to not throw up and i had i scraped my forehead from like rubbing so many times but uh anyways the thing that i find interesting about dying light is that it reviews well people seem to enjoy it whenever i hear someone talk about it it does not sound like a good game (laughs) <laughs> like, I've, I've, I've listened to Giant Bomb, I've listened to uh, yeah. Polygon, I've listened to you, like... Because you, cause the thing is, I don't want to oversell it. That's why I'm stopping to think so much about what to say, because... No, I, don't, I, I mean, that's fine. I guess I just I want to know, like, how much of this game being a, a hit right now is a product of... Which, empty, by the way, to be fair, 1.2 million copies yeah, sold insane. in seven days, which is... That's... I guess my question is, wow. why do we laugh at Dead Island Riptide, and yet this game is like, wow, it's really good. This is a better game. The parkour, uh, we forget. The day-night cycles are exciting, which that's something completely different that a zombie yeah, yeah. game hasn't I, really I think, done. Yeah, that that stuff is cool. Um, I just, to me, the biggest issue with the game, and we talked about this a little bit, Zach, is like I think that I, I, I got a little bit confused by the tone of the game because mm-hmm. I... It made me think that it's going to be like this serious game, like, you know, that's very much about survival and everything. But then all the mechanics, a lot of the cutscenes and a lot of the missions just, you know, completely unrealistic stuff. Like, you know, the the, the heights you're falling. I mean, you're using a grappling hook in the future. So I, I just got to like, I, to me, going into it, I had a different tone in mind for the game. I thought it would be a, a more grounded experience. But instead, it's just craziness and... Like, it almost fits better with a Dead Island in terms of just being a crazy storyline. I think it's because it is a Dead Island game that then they wrapped in a more serious tone. So, because people, like, you talk to those, whatever they, nationality they were, Australian or South African, the, some of the voice actors for Dead Island, and it was like you're following Hugh Jackman around in this truck and you're clipping through things, and it was like a, a joke. They still seem to have a lot of the same gameplay tendencies, but now in more of a hey, we want to make this a legit game. I mean, it's clearly paid off for them. It, it seems to be a better game. It reviews better. People like it better. Gabe, one thing that me and Max don't have a lot of experience with is the the night stuff. And last week we were talking about, is that going to get old, too stressful, boring? Like, over the course of the game, how did the night aspect play into the whole, you know, the grand scheme of the game? Um, they, they, they talked about that a lot, huh? Like, that being, like, the big separating thing. Right. That- I don't know because at, at first it's super stressful. I mean, I went uh, I went over it last week, but yeah. with time you learn to adapt. You, you know certain things you do and don't do. You can avoid the volatiles. You don't have to confront them. You don't, but you're also not going to just be running around like crazy at night unless you want to die. Uh, co-op is different. Um, I played a, a, a huge chunk of the game co-op with uh, two other people, so it was three of us. You can play up to four people, I believe. Now maybe that impacted like how easy it was, or does oh it oh scale yeah with. Like, is there more zombies when you're in co-op? Like, I, I, I do, do they not scale think, the difficulty? I don't think so. Or did it not feel like so. it? No, no, no. They don't scale it. And one of the guys that we were playing with, he finished it before me, so he was a higher level. So, you know, we had a crutch at all times. If there was a couple of volatiles. Volatiles are always tough, even when you're like... So, so to be fair, though, like, with that in mind, that kind of could say that, like, that kind of distorted your view, right? Because, to be fair, like, if you're in single player and you're scaling slowly through the game you would have a more difficult time right and well, it yeah. would still remain stressful and intense I guess what and everything though, like i've heard that it's not 
required often enough that you can just sleep through the night. You don't really need that extra XP, and you don't have to well, involve yourself. You that don't much need with it, policies. but you want those better weapons. There's certain weapons that you have to be like level 19 to get, and yeah. the you know the grappling hook. It's not easy to get to level 12. Like it's not yeah. a cakewalk. Sure, progression helps, but I can see an instance where you finish the game and you're not level 12. I mean, you have to get the grappling hook. I think it's just part of the story, but. Mm-hmm. You de- the incentive is there you want the better weapons you don't want to be overrun by these zombies like I said I was able to kill all of them with one blow of my, of my katana because I was able to unlock that katana and you can't get it unless you're leveling up and the nighttime is a huge way to do it the guy that I told you that was higher level than us he was like that because he played at the nighttime almost exclusively like he liked messing around he liked going there messing with volatiles and getting away like evading them because mm-hmm. that, give, that gives you uh, experience to your, towards your agility and, and things so- that What's your favorite part of the game? Like, just straight up, your favorite part of the game. Doesn't matter if other people would like it or not. Like, what was your... What makes this a good game to you? The fact that... I think it was the co-op. The co-op was really, really fun. Okay. There's even the... I don't think I uh, talked about these last week, but you're doing co-op, let's say, and airdrop falls, right? You gotta Mm -hmm. go get the airdrop. And instead of just all of you going... Or one of you going to get the airdrop for everybody... They give you a prompt. They say, okay, there's an airdrop right there. You can set up a uh, competition. Okay. Um, everybody accepts it, like me and my two friends. And, okay, first one to get to the airdrop gets extra experience plus whatever's in the airdrop. So you have a, a competitive ac- aspect to it. So you got to get to the airdrop before everyone else. And you get the stuff. You get the extra experience. And they're out of luck. So that that – and – I did talk about this last week. Um, that lends to a lot of actual fun situations as well. So, Single player, do you think you'd like the game as much? Well, I mean, I played a lot of it single player. Uh, my, okay. l- my series is 23 parts. I played maybe 13 of them by myself. I played 10 okay. co-op. So single player, it was a little bit more tense. It was more difficult. I was dying more. But the dying, we went over last week, It you're not necessarily impacted all that much you lose experience well, you lose ex- yeah yeah experience. but we gotta correct ourselves on that you lose experience and i guess like the story i mean the story's it- cool too P- people say the story's okay. sort of generic and it is but i really like some of these characters and my two favorite characters uh, what, no, all right whatever i once called it um it, it's super i, I like it <laughs> I, I was gonna say so. i was gonna Ladies say so. German, the next uh pull quote is yeah. gonna be on the dying light uh, game of the year edition I like it. I guess, and like, I'm not Hotel trying to pin Gabe. this on you, Gabe, because this this is everybody is, is saying similar things to what you're saying. It's like, if this game came out alongside the others in November, would it be Forgotten Six, or would it still be an eight, you know, uh, eight seven point eight four? I think 8. the game. 4. I think the game stand on its own. It, it, maybe it won't sell as well, but I think it still reviews as well. Do you think it it's a case of people loving smashing zombies more than anything? <laughs> it's fun. I mean, it it really is. Yeah. Like Max, what was your experience the first few hours? Like aside from like the the you know, tone, it, yeah, the tone, yeah. Um, uh, other than that, like, um, I felt like again there was a, at the very beginning like the the kicking is a little ridiculous, like mm-hmm. uh, so much so that I would opt to like try to get around the zombies because I just like it does take a lot of hits to kill them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, so see, you're not supposed to try to kill them with your kicks. That's the problem. No, no, no. I, I mean, I'm just I know that obviously you could like. Uh, knock them down and grab a weapon and finish them off or whatever. But I'm just saying um, it felt like, again, for me, it's probably my own fault for thinking that the tone was the biggest kind of like shocker because I was like, whoa, okay, that's very different to what I was expecting, especially like even in the very, very early get-go, like when you jump off that giant, like, I don't know, what, what would you a, call it? A like plane, a, whatever it was. No, 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 after. Like, oh, you know, into the, the trash plane? bags. Yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it was just, like, so, like, okay, yeah, that that's uh, probably going to kill me. But, <laughs> so, like, some of this stuff is, like, a little strange uh, from a story choice. Uh, but I think that, again, I think that it is a fun game. Um, I was surprised by how good the game looks because I don't know why in screenshots I thought the game was going to look awful. But that's then great. when... Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a pretty game, and I was like, wow, that this is like a lot better than what I thought it would look. And again, I played it on the PC, so maybe your experience on the PlayStation is something different. I don't know. I think it's just a game that might be more fun than it is good, and maybe that's what a lot of the comments and a lot of the reviews are speaking to. Is like it's a very enjoyable game. Maybe some of the you know pieces don't come together in a perfect way, but I guess I just look to a game of like 
well, what stood out for you? So if it's Last of Us, you're like, oh my God, the story got to me. Or if it's Uncharted, you know, the story. Or if it's Mario, like the, the controls are, like there's nothing it doesn't seem like to pinpoint for Dying Light. So maybe it's a game that the just- The parkour stands out. Does it? Okay. So the parkour stands out and- well, look, I think it, the night cycles are cool. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. A, I mean, just it, um, the, the night cycles alone, the concept is nice. Yeah. If they could build on that, maybe in a sequel. I mean, we're going to get a sequel. I would imagine this game did well. So yeah. if we have a sequel and conceptually they make the night cycles more dangerous or, or more worth it or, or fix it, not that they're broken now, but just make them a little bit different, I, I think that that could really be something interesting. Yeah. So where does this leave Dead Island 2? Like, Dead Island 2 doesn't have product core, but it has, like, the crazy. Is, I mean, is that going to feel just dead in the water like this is a... Oh, Ma Max, I wanted to talk um, about tonally you you said that this is sort of all over the place the story is serious you know you're trying to mm -hmm. save these people but yeah. at the same time you're doing all these wacky things like you said i mean you're having an electrical sword you have a sword on fire yeah, 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 yeah. And the side quests are super wacky um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how many of them you've done but you know this um, one of them there's this, this crazy guy he has this medicine that you need and he will only give it to you if you go get this like chocolate and vhs tape that <laughs> that his mom wants to watch because it, okay. his mom wants to see it and it has to be done all right so you go fe <laughs> you fetch the stuff you bring it back to him he, he takes the stuff he's like okay me and mom are gonna watch this movie now you can't be here <laughs> so y y you climb his house y you go in through a hole you go in there and he's watching this movie and next to him is this like blow up doll with like a bucket head and it oh said God. world's best mom on his shirt. His mom's been dead this whole time oh and he God. just went so crazy. Just, yeah. yeah, like I, I get what you're saying, like tonally, like something like that that's just crazy wacky, like a bucket head blow up doll that says world's yeah. best mom on it. Yeah. And this guy is just doing everything he can to make her happy. I, I, but to be fair, I guess you could also talk about the fact that he's just crazy, right? Like, yeah, and how a this very, world, it's a very serious yeah, problem. Yeah, like this world has, like, yeah. you know, just made you go completely insane. Yeah, I mean, again, I think that this game is like what you nailed it. Like, uh, from my perspective, like, to wrap it up, I think that um, it's fun. And to be fair, like, there's a lot of times that we don't give enough credit to that. Like, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of times, a lot of these games like Watch Dogs and stuff have a ton of side missions and a ton of content and a ton of stuff, but none of it is fun. It just all feels like chores. Whereas here, if it's fun, and from what I've experienced, it is a fun to be in the world, like to mm -hmm. run around and parkour and stuff, then what's wrong with that? Like, you know what I mean? There's nothing sure. wrong with just making up fun simple experience and even way. as you're talking about it, it's kind of opening my mind because i always do look for like oh i wanted to have this you know exquisite storyline or i wanted to have this fantastic new mechanic or this beautiful city but perhaps you know in the same way that i really like a nintendo game because it's fun to move mario around if it's if it's fun to be this guy and you know you're troy baker with a slight accent in in dying light land and grappling around and smashing zombies and there isn't like there's not a culminating point that's like boom, this is why it's a 9.0. Like, that's okay. Maybe it's just a fun game, and, and that's what people are really attaching on to more than a specific element of the design. They, they try with the story. I wish they would have uh, made it a little bit different. It's a little bit generic, the the story. Yeah. And, and, and if maybe they, they would have taken a different route with it and maybe had some of these characters fleshed out a little bit more because one of my favorite characters dies early on. I'm not going to say who it is to avoid that, but I wish they would have fleshed them out a little bit more. They have strong females, um... Jade, uh, the the character that saves you in like the very mm -hmm. first part of the game, she, she's a character throughout the game, and she's like a strong, strong female, and you know, not mm -hmm. sexualized. Uh, whenever mm -hmm. you're with her, you're not like staring at her butt or whatever. Your character's not making, <laughs> you know, jokes about yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah. and not just her. There's other. There's one other female uh, character that comes to mind that, you know, sexuality is just never mentioned in this game. It, it, you know, it's about surviving and it's about um, helping these people, and that's it. Uh, along with all the wackiness that that comes with the game, but. Uh, I, th I think the game should be commended for maybe avoiding some of those like sexual tropes that a lot of these zombie games like have and, yeah, um, a, and fun point. little easter eggs uh, one of the blueprints that you have to climb like one of the highest points in the game it's called like surprise mo you know mother effort and, and it's a blueprint that it's a play off the, the way that a character in the show Dexter died um, I don't know if you guys watch that but uh, there's yeah, a, yeah. yeah so the way Dokes dies is a reference to what the blueprint does for your weapon so i mean there's fun stuff in it cool. do you ever get a sense this will be the last question on dying light do you ever get a sense that it's a, it's from a, a you know b-tier developer like does that ever come through yeah i accept throughout the entirety of the game uh, so, I, so you it to, does show that yeah to me this is not a triple a game like this is a okay. really fun double a game 
Okay. Like, it doesn't need to be a triple. It doesn't hurt it, though. Yeah. yeah. Not, Especially I'm, when we argue that there should be more games that are kind of that yeah. medium bracket, right? I, I tweeted it out. Like, the second day I was playing, I said, people like to complain that, you know, mid-tier games are dying and, and that mid-level games are just dying off and that there's no more of them. Go support Dying Light because this is everything that you're complaining about that is no longer in the industry it's right here so support it so they can make more of it so gabe i give you a, a round of applause a little golf clap here because i walked into this conversation with a lot of uh like a lot of dying like kind of mediocre but like the different different elements of it that uh, like like you said it's a it's a more of a mid-tier game it's more fun than it. like i now have a, of a newfound respect and i'm excited to go hopefully play more of this yeah i'm telling so. you guys the co-op is super fun <laughs> Yeah. So you I, could, I typically think that co-op, I mean, if you're talking about tone, like to me that, yeah, it, any it, seriousness flies out the window. It, it, it does, it off. does. But that's why it's a good idea to just do the side quest because the side quests are already wacky. You're already doing yeah. stuff like the things I described. So if you are playing co-op and you're doing this wacky stuff, yeah, I mean, it, it lends itself pretty well to that. Yeah, yep. and I think now we'll move on to some listener feedback. Uh, uh, a couple games. Wait, a Pathion? <laughs> Never mind. No, go ahead. I don't got to talk. I don't have to oh. talk about it. Oh, do you okay. want to give us your give us your quick hit? Because I'm gonna play it this week. Right. Talk give about give us the 60 second volatile yeah. Gabe All right. run up. All right, I'll pat I'll pat the on. It's not super great. Uh, sty okay. Stylistically, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Uh, right, st stylistically, it. very very pretty. Uh, you know, Greek uh -huh. mythology. If you're into that, um, uh -huh. you know, you're Kratos. You're not really Kratos, but you gotta. Zeus is wronging you, so you gotta go take Zeus down. Two uh, D side scrolling, sort of Metroidvania. Um, I wish the combat was a little bit better than it was. It feels super floaty. Uh, your weapons break super easy, sort of like in Dying Light. It's free for PlayStation Plus. That's why I wanted to talk about it. So I think you should uh, play it. And so, it. Okay, it's worth playing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's worth checking out. It's free. So. You think they ever will put a great game free, or is like is that like a a death knell? Like the fact that it's free right when it releases is that just like a sign that this is a. Um, there was already a couple. Resogun was one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Awesome. Uh, Good point. Um. And he is awesome. So. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and there was one more that... Not, not anymore. Not anymore. Uh, there's one more that I'm sure was was good. Um, okay. Transistor. So Transistor, I believe. Cool style. Was mediocre yeah. combat. It's on PS Plus now. I don't know if it was free. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, but, you know... Would you pay for this? Maybe. It, it's $15. <laughs> I, w I would love to pay $10 for it. Okay. See, like, this is why I'm saying Life is Strange is such a good taste test five bucks and you get to experience the world like it's not like five bucks and you don't get the graphics you only get the story five bucks and you get a bite-sized chunk of the game like i wonder if at some point we get five dollar trials of every game you can play the first 60 minutes of uncharted 4 for five dollars like paid demos uh, we don't have to get into this but like there's something to say for that because i think that you sell a lot by giving the player a little and then it wouldn't need to be a beta it would be a paid I, like I a, rent, a rental. I wouldn't. Almost. I and wouldn't say episode one of away. Life is Strange is a paid demo, though. No, 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 for sure not. But it's a taste of a full game. Yeah. That, no, uh, but uh, yeah, but about but about a Pathion, I basically just wanted to say try it if it's free. I mean, okay. it, it, it's it's decent. Um, and yeah, I haven't. Again, most games, if it's free, you might as well. Uh, there, no, there's some that it, <laughs> you might as well just save your time. Well, but yeah. 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 So. Next week, we've got Battlefield Hardline. The beta is out this week. I'm sure we'll be trying that out. Um, is there anything else? There's an, a new Ubisoft game um, called Grow Home that I'm definitely yeah. going to play. It's a PC title from their more indie side of things. Mm -hmm. You got a um, code yet? I don't, but I will try. I and don't. then <laughs> we are a week away from uh, the new 3DS, a week and a half, and, and Majora's Mask. I'm desperately trying to acquire that so hopefully i'll have some some talk on on that thing um other than that let's move to our fans audience, audience feedback. feedback rodrigo speaking on vr says besides using it for education science and other stuff like that i think it would be interesting if the vr tech was used in esports that would probably put the players into another level of training performance and then maybe the esports world would be taken more seriously by non-gaming so i think he's thinking of like if they were like okay you're locked into your seat you've got your vr set on let's go like that would be a more like you would have to be like, act like uh, this is going to sound like mean, but I don't mean it to sound like <laughs> athletic and stuff. Well, I don't even know if it's that. I mean, that could be one. I think, by the way, like... VR for regular sports, that'd yeah. be awesome too. Imagine if you Why not just do the right actual sport as, though? As they're about to throw. <laughs> Why not just go outside and shoot a basketball? No, because no, Gabe, you can go no, out there and as you're like, watching... Tony Romo can throw you the ball and you can catch it from him. and like. Can, I, th can I throw like... it to him and hit him in the balls? 
Yeah, if you, if, yeah that's the M-rated <laughs> version. Sure. But I think he's even, even talking about, like, it would be a more, um, the presentation could be more stylized and cinematic. Instead of five guys sitting there, like, moving their mouths, they're, like, locked into this world. And you could yeah. have all these, like, flashing lights yeah. and these big seats. And each person could have their custom throne and custom yeah. goggles and, like, give it a little bit more Tron flair almost. I don't yeah. know, man. I, I am not a fan of VR. I don't want VR. You, can, you, you guys can keep that. I don't know. I, I, I think it, it's the, it's going to be the future, so I'm excited. But, yeah, I think that's a cool a cool idea. Generally speaking, I think eSports is uh, only in its very, very early inception. <laughs> and uh, uh, with that in mind, like, um, I ended up watching a bit of the uh, Smash. Um, Apex. Apex, Apex yeah. 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 And that was so exciting. Like yeah, it, it's I so love interesting that. how I watched it for a few hours. Like again, I think that that show is definitely could use like more um like to be more presentable to like a new viewer because it's very like hardcore oriented. Well, you know? Evo's bigger. Like Apex is is smaller. E Evo is a bigger, better version of Apex, and that's coming. Yeah, but so. I just mean like I watched the League of Legends uh, finals, even though I don't play a ton of League, but I've played it before and enjoy it. Um and the way they do it like it does feel like a huge sporting yeah. event you yeah. know what i mean it's it's to me, I think like a very lot of very exciting esports is going to come down to how well they are able to personalize the people involved because like a lot of sports isn't necessarily about the actual ball yeah, it's about the personalities, it's like yeah. lebron james but Tom i think Brady. they do a good job of that already like you've got uh, now they've got like teams like you know mm -hmm. like for like evil geniuses or whatever it is like there's like um, actual teams and then you've got like specifically like, let's um god what's the guy's name uh nate shot right like yeah. he's a huge he's, star I, right uh and like he's a completely like you know player in the esports scene and this everything. is super cynical but like LeBron James, Tom Brady, these are all like very masculine, muscular, like and, and the the good looking ones do well. They put Tom Brady and people in commercials because of the fact that, you know, whatever. I know this is very stereotypical, but are we gonna have, you know, geeky gamers being like the guy who plays Street Fighter thirty hours a day, is he gonna be in the next, you know, Nike ad? Well, no, Justin Wong, no. I mean, but I, I think there's an element of like, look, when you start making a lot of money and everything, we can present you as yeah, a track. Oh, oh, sure, sure. Like, like the whole thing, like, can they find a way to yeah, really? Yeah, I think, look, that's all marketing already at yeah. that point. You know what I mean? Like, and I, oh. look, there's going to be a lot of people that say that, uh, like, Lionel Messi is not, not a very good looking guy, but the guy sure. is like one, number sure. one or two uh, best soccer player in the world, you know? Yeah, sure. So yeah. it's, and, and again, and he's in a million commercials, right? So it's just yeah. all about like, you know, proper marketing, make like all that stuff is like aesthetical. I, yeah. I think it's just now. I think it's a matter of um, how do you make this? Like, how do you adapt this to the general public? Right? Because they're, they're, they're gamers working on are it. accepting of it, uh, and you've got certain countries that are accepting of it. Like, you know, Korea is huge into league and everything. Like for them, they have like channels that show it and everything like that. So. Um, conveying I, I, the rules, conveying the the goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If yeah. you don't understand football, you know, throw it to this guy. He catches it, and runs in, at, to the end of the field. Exactly. It's harder to convey League of Legends. It's harder to convey. Yeah, you know, but uh, Smash but to, yeah, I, I mean, but to be the good thing about it is that at the end of the day, it's just like any other sport. You can play it, and then you yes, know the rules, for which sure. is and really nice. You know, it's so growing that, in popularity. Yeah, and, and I think that things like league or more importantly for me for example hearthstone like i've been playing a ton of hearthstone recently because mm. i don't know it's just that game is honestly perfect like the way it's designed and everything it's it's awesome there's a reason why they've got like what 20 million players already or something like mm. even higher than i don't remember the last numbers but uh, i remember it's last time that i saw it was 20 i think maybe it recently came out like 40 or 50 million players which a is lot. insane either way uh so I mean, like, what prevents us from seeing Hearthstone in the same way as they show poker? I like, think the hard right? part right now is, like, the the MOBAs are the biggest esports, but I think they're also, for the, the general public, probably the most boring, like, yeah, visual experience. Yeah, they're not super fun to watch, not MOBAs. Yeah, they're difficult to convey. If you're a hardcore gamer or into it, it's, it's exciting and you follow, yeah. and even if you don't follow, like, you, you get it, but average person, you know, General Joe... Uh, yeah. Is he gonna want to watch top-down clicking? No, but I love Call of Duty, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, on the Oculus front, uh, right. Ginja, Ginja Ninja Gamer Ginja says, Ninja uh, when Gamer, "You guys are talking about name. the availability of Oculus. His school is actually buying them for his class." That is fantastic. There I wonder go. what uh, what they're using them for. Probably 
It's probably like some matrix experiment. They're probably like it's how to like, how to uh, sim how to simulate S uh, exit routes. Are you in a private school or are you in a public school? What were you saying, Gabe? They're probably using it to uh, simulate exit uh, exit routes in the emergency <laughs> uh, scenarios. Oh I'm oh not. God. There's bad jokes that I can make there that I'm not going to. My scraggy kind of falls in line with my train of thought. And he says, I think my problem with VR is that it could create health problems. It's not the same as playing the Wii, um, which was kind of advocating for better health. In yeah. fact, it's putting the headset on. Could it destroy your brain? Could it mess with your eyes? Could it you know, cause isolation? And it is a, an advancement in gaming that may have negative health effects as opposed to the last kind of not just gimmick gaming. gaming we saw. Yeah, well, for yeah. society. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, though, like with that in mind, like, look, we don't know what the Internet does to us. Right. Yeah. Like, what is this like data packets that we oh, can't see? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, this much being surrounded by this much electricity uh, and electrical currents. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we, it's just one of those things that, you know, maybe 150 years from now, we're going to be like, oh, my God, what were we thinking doing this or sure. using oil or like, you know, I mean it's it, it's just that's mankind we kind of like you know oh we like this I okay mean, let's run it down obvious, though that like vr would potentially have more negative impact than we motion control i mean like that you can't really deny but that. but at the, on the flip side it could have a ton of benefits right like imagine in society i don't know about health wise well Unless, like, your brain grows okay, because Okay, but you're... What, what if, for example, people who are, suffer from depression and you could put them into, yeah. like, you know, pleasant have, environments pleasant. <laughs> or something? Yeah, but, like, yeah. it's funny, but that's the truth, yeah, it's, right? It is true. It's very so, true. Um, it's, like, again, it's all going to be execution and some of the other stuff. Like, I can't really even comment, like, um, in fully inform them because, honestly, I, I personally yeah. don't feel smart enough to yeah. even discuss that stuff. Gabe, you're anti-VR? For the most part, man. Yeah. Well, at least now, man, I like having a controller in my hand. Yeah. I don't want to be any more closed off to the world than I am already, and I feel like having a thing on my head that's going to put me in a virtual reality is going to separate me even more from the reality that I want. It. Like, it's too much. Like, why can't ent entertainment just be on our screen? Like, why does it need to be, like, in our eye? That's, like, that's the line that I kind of fall on is, like, whether you want to call it health or just humanity, like, everyone. Sanity. Like, yeah, people yeah. are going to go crazy. Like, we'll see. We'll see. Aaron TNT takes us in a totally different direction. Do you like All Kirby? Right. Do you like I love Kirby? Kirby. I'm tired of Kirby being experimental. How do you feel about this and Kirby in general? Like, I want regular Kirby games, not Rainbow Curse or Epic Yarn. I just want a good old Kirby game. These are good old Kirby games. <laughs> What's wrong with yeah. them? They are, I, I just think he wants, like, the more traditional, like, side-scrolling um, uh, experience or whatever. But uh, wasn't... I don't think Kirby's big enough to, to do that. I think they have to add the gimmick to make it a... Wait, Freedom when did game. when did Triple Deluxe come out? Was that last? Uh, the three. Yeah, last year. Yeah, so that was. Yeah, but that was. Yeah, I know, but there you go. If What's you wrong with Epic Yarn? Kirby. It's happy. It's Deluxe. nice. I mean, it, it's. Rainbow I mean, Curse looks fun. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you've seen any of the, the footage that came out in Japan uh, a couple weeks ago, and like, it's a gamepad, very gamepad focused game where you're drawing where Kirby's going to go. It almost seems like a, a 3DS or DS title yeah. uh, that they put on the Wii U. That's kind of interesting. And our last letter of the day um, comes from Bogies. He has an interesting point. He says, violent games sell well because the majority of people buying them are adults. The games are marketed towards adults because adults have the money. They slash we have the buying power. Adults typically don't want to sit around playing Pokemon or save princesses. We want to shoot something. It's just true. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, by that logic, why is Justin Bieber the most the highest selling no. artist or whatever last year or two years ago? No, by that because by that logic, have, have a lot of pool on their parents. Right? Yeah, by that logic, why is Call of Duty the most you know bought game? Kids cannot buy. Uh, I mean, uh, like kids cannot buy Call of Duty, but they're the ones playing it. It's ten year olds, yeah. like. Call of Duty doesn't. I, I would. I would bet that there are more sixteen and younger year old people playing Call of Duty yeah, than, than for adults. Sure. I, I think that's the point out of that. Is like, sure, adults have the money, but it's not the adults that want the gore. I'd say even more, it's the the younger audience that wants the gore and wants to, to see that and, and do that and be a part of that. And and that's what their friends are doing in Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto. Um, it does make a point about like adults not wanting to buy. I mean, this gets into, like, a parenting discussion of, like, the gamer parent who's coming up now, like, the people who are parents right now having babies, in four or five years... Are right at this be very like, moment. Right. <laughs> right? Well, somebody is. The right. lady <laughs> delivering the child yeah. at the hospital. Is, gonna, yeah. is her husband in five years going to be like, son... Black Ops 2, that was my favorite. Son, Assassin's Creed Unity, that was my favorite. Grand Theft Auto 5, I is remember when I Joe shot again? that guy. 
<laughs> just general judgment. <laughs> but like, is he gonna? Is that gonna like totally change things? Because if you think about our parents, who may have had, if they had experiences with video games, it was Mario, Final Fantasy, Zelda. The current parents, the people who are about to become parents, God. their main experiences are gonna be Dead Space, Resident Evil. Are they gonna be ushering? their six-year-old into the world of M-rated games. Yeah, they're going to be ushering the Omen, the son of Satan. We are all going to die. Now, I mean, I guess, but like you said, it goes into a parenting discussion yeah. that I don't necessarily care to have. I'm not a parent. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah, I think it's it's more parenting driven. And at the end of the day, I don't think that uh, adults look for gore and everything like that. I think adults just look for smarter games in yeah. general. You know, like we spoke to that like... <laughs> No, no, to a certain extent, yes, but I think that there's also an element of like uh, you want to like see a cool story or an interesting yeah. story, you know, whereas a kid uh, might not be as focused on that and would just want to see like, you know, the blood splatter and everything like that, you know. Uh, like there's a reason why Happy Wheels is so popular, right? Because sure. it's got that gore and like that craziness factor. Like a but, Minecraft. So more complex. Uh, but at the same time, like, okay, let's say, let's put it this way. Is Last of Us gory and horrific yes but is it horrific for the sake of being horrific and terrifying no it's because it's trying to explain what is this world that these two characters yeah, live just, in I just and how they interact general joe is not showing his son last of us he's showing grand theft auto call of duty and and these sort of well i mean play mainstream game because last of us is much success as it had the madden gamer isn't playing last of us the call of duty gamer so, some have awesome. to some have to be for it to sell as much as it did yeah, I mean, some did adapt it for sure because it sold like very, 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 very strong both times and in remastered and unremastered. Uh, but again, even with stuff like uh, GTA, like I don't enjoy it or whatever, but from what I understand the story is interesting there or whatever. So I, again, I don't know. I didn't play it, so I, I can't speak for it. Yeah. But I'm sure that there is some interesting. I, dem I demand that you speak for it. <laughs> I mean, just, just to give you a quick statistical uh, bit here. Um, Last of Us sold seven million copies. I think GTA sold like thirty million or something. Yeah, so, yeah. sure, but yeah. The Last of Us, there some of those people play Madden. They have like they have to be, like the, the weirdest. The, <laughs> the 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 Last of Us is. Gabe is gonna walk around now around his entire city. He's like, do you play Madden? Do you play Last of Us? He's gonna like, boom, and I'm gonna pull them and I'm gonna take them yeah. to In the Texas, next. Because I bet they're all playing. Well, I won't say that. No. Uh, <laughs> come on, man. Ooh. I've seen those videos of people with their like automatic rifles standing out of strip malls like to exert their force and like I'm sure that's only in set areas but yeah, yeah it's, it's not in my area but I've definitely seen it like yeah, driving so. through like the countryside and whatnot <laughs> so I think in, in another like the flip side of that is like a lot of adults are also buying Nintendo games like because that's what they grew up with a lot of adults are buying the you know the stuff that I mean I think blood and guts and games you know, they transcend age, and it's just kind of what you're exposed to, what you like. And uh, yeah. we hope you like us. So make sure to give us your feedback, questions, comments down below. Let us know your thoughts. Um, one question I had uh, for, for the audience this week, if you want to comment specifically, if you're still here right now, is what do you think of the face cam? Um, do you like that? Do you want that every week? And then also, um, our, our new game discussion, would you rather the new game talk like about Dying Light and about um, so Life is Strange be at the, the front of the podcast or the back. We're still trying to make this the best show we can. We've kind of got our crew. Including coming up with a name. <laughs> yes, we, we, we got our crew established. We Zach got, like, forgets about that running. very often. <laughs> but uh, Which, by the way, if they could help us, maybe yeah, they could sure. make we'll some take, We'll take name suggestions, but we're, we're close to making this thing a, uh, a, a real deal. Um, and we're definitely moving in that direction. We appreciate your views and your eyes and your ears and, and all your love um, and the rest been of you too <laughs> all of yeah your, your legs your, your pinky toe <laughs> your all of that um and it's it's been a really positive experience and that's really awesome to see that everybody's in, enjoying these uh these shows so thank you too with the triforce of canada and the triforce of texas for for making yeah. our full trio wait I, wait this is illuminati is it not oh no. wait can all hold up. Uh, Tri isn't the Triforce triangular? Well, yeah, yeah but then that's also like Illuminati, I believe. Oh, man. Now watch. Half the college. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of Illuminati references in Life is Strange, by the way. Yeah. If you, uh, you want to touch on that. But definitely touch on the comment button. Let us know what you think. Make sure to check out these guys on Twitter. Twitter.com slash Blitzwinger for Max. Twitter.com slash Volatile Gabe for Gabe. And uh, Gabe Volatile Gabe, thanks for being here. Max Blitzwinger Max, thanks for being here. <laughs> and Zach goes Zach. <laughs> Till next time, everybody. Thanks again. Drink some hot chocolate. We'll see you all later. Peace.